Okay. Are we live? Okay. Seems like it. Fantastic. Uh, just caught me expanding nuclear power a little bit more. Uh, I think with this new blueprint version that I made here, um, the substations are probably not quite going to touch each other if the uh, power plants are built next to each other. Might have to add some big poles in. I swapped this one out over here. That's actually not going to work out too well. Uh, so that goes there. Up here is the old version of the nuclear plant design. The newer one has uh, all of the offshore pumps nice and snug in the middle. And uh, substations are touching them. Don't need to add anything. Also added some accumulators because we could fit them. Uh, some storage tanks just so that we could do some fuel management. And it adds has the added bonus of uh, synchronizing all of the inserters that enter the fuel into the uh, reactors. Which looks cool. Very important. Uh, but yeah, somehow we got a problem with delivery of nuclear fuel to our nuclear plants. We've actually got, we had more than a chest full of uh, nuclear fuel over here, but it wasn't getting delivered to the nuclear plants and the entire base just blacked out. Uh, so that's going to be the next thing I give my attention to. Just as soon as my robots are done building, looks like they've finished. Um, let's head back to base and resupply and stuff. I also went through my logistic requests and made everything nice and tidy. Uh, no doubt when we unlock a few things with research, we're going to find that we run out of space to lay everything out exactly the same as the crafting menu. But this will do. Um, what else? I noticed there was a Mexican wave type situation happening with this little uh, uh, trash pickup station, which was a holdover from the earlier system we had where we were only telling LTN about what's in these chests right here because we had something separating these wires, um, the balanced loader wasn't working correctly, so effectively they were just all inserting one stack at a time and then waiting for the entire wave to get back to the, uh, to get to the back of these, uh, steel chests. What else? Um, I've been playing with the settings of the Omni Smelters. I made a slight mistake in well, a couple of slight mistakes in how I set up the, uh, uh, how I set up the system to make sure we don't smelt steel until we've got a lot of iron plate. Um, what I had here was, I think, if iron plate is less than a thousand, send the, a hundred thousand, set the, re uh, send the red signal. So in other words, don't smelt steel unless we've got a lot of iron plate. Um, but actually, I should have realized all that would accomplish is as soon as we drop below 100k, uh, we stop smelting steel. Um, for now, I've just gotten rid of the condition that if steel plate is less than a train load, start smelting steel. Because instead, we're just going to say... If there's lots of iron plate, you can start smelting steel. And if steel storage is greater than 100k, you uh, don't smelt any steel. Um, so we've gone ahead and patched all of the Omni smelters like that. This one isn't doing anything. I, I sincerely doubt it's because we have 100,000 steel. We've got 3.6k. What's going on? 
Same goes for this one, so I should probably start here. Um, let's see. For input resources, we've got 98,000 iron plate, 32k uh, copper, 33k stone, and no iron ore. Uh, output is lots of stone brick, quite a bit of copper, less than a train load of iron plate, not much steel. We can see on this red wire what we're not allowed to smelt at the moment. Um, okay, we don't have any... Uh, vulcanite blocks. Therefore, therefore, we're not smelting that. So, based on resources missing, we're not making iron plate, glass, cryonite, or the uh, versions of Iron plate, copper, glass, or stone brick that require vulcanite blocks. Why are those negative two, though? Well, it's getting normalized anyway. So that shouldn't matter. Um, we should be making steel, definitely. Well, actually... If steel doesn't get started until 100k iron plate, is that the only thing we should be making though? There's plenty of copper, plenty of stone. Hey, I am Suck. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Oh, I think I know the answer. So it's only iron plate and steel that we don't have a train load, right, for the output? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So it thinks there's no need to smelt copper at the moment and we don't have enough iron plate for it to start steel and there's no iron here for some reason so that does actually follow the logic that i've programmed into it i just need to change it um i think we'll make the same change that we've made to steel here where instead of starting when we're below 16k um Well, oh, and I also changed the ratio of uh, speed modules to efficiency modules over here, uh, so that this is rated to do exactly the maximum uh, for steel plate. 90 iron plate per second is the maximum that uh, two blue belts can supply. I'm more concerned at, at getting steel fast enough than um, than not being able to utilize all the furnaces when we uh, smelt copper or iron plate, for example. A cyclomatic, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for the raid. How's your stream? Welcome, raiders. Raid, yes indeed. Warata, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. A evil pla, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. So should I just make it so that copper plate, for example, we don't have to wait until it's down to less than one train load? Or is this actually okay? And well in the stream was good. Nice. Um, I want to check we've got iron ore in other places. We've got more than a train load here. Uh, almost no iron ore here. Or slightly less than one train load. Less than a train load. Uh, zero here. And zero here. And that is concerning. Okay. Um... We've got more power now, so I should probably put those uh, ore mining drills back in place. Pr 
probably don't have enough power to support 64 of them. We do have it controlled by a power switch, so we're not going to kill the base with this, but uh, if we get to the point where the drills are switching on and off all the time, um, based on the accumulator here, uh, then we're not going to get anything more by adding more core mining drills. In fact, it might slow us down. Any space work today? Yeah, most likely. Um, we need to... I can't remember what it was, but we need to do something uh, with space science. I would also like to set up a... I, th I think I would like to set up the delivery cannon so that we're delivering everything uh, that we need to keep. Well, everything except for the coal and ice. I'll, I think I'll keep using the um, cargo rockets to supply this stuff because we don't need to send them that often. We're very full on most of the fluids here. Um, oh, except for water? What? Oh, okay. There's your problem. There we go. Wow, that's fast. That is, that is really fast. Stack inserter can't keep up, and it's 100 water for each piece of ice. Anyway. Um, yeah, definitely want to get the science more automated. And I think I would like to do... Um, what is it? Material science? I'm, I'm sure I've researched that. Where is it? Oh, it's way down here for some reason. Uh, that might be a challenge. So we need significant data. Which I'm having trouble finding. Oh. This has three different products. Interesting. A Veldek. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Gonna have to run bedtime. Hope you have a great one. Yeah, uh, you too, Cyclo. Thanks for dropping by. Have a good sleep. Um, I'm okay. Don't forget the core mining drills we just asked for. Where are they? What? I know we've got them. We. Did I... Oh, here we go. There's your problem. A podcast with slides. Always got to check that little box. So, significant data... Blank data card and thermofluid comes out of... A supercomputer. You need material... Insight and cold thermofluid. I don't think we have a way to make cold thermofluid yet. I might be already researching how to do that. Um, or maybe not. Okay, I don't think we're going to be getting material science uh, started for at least five minutes. Um, but yeah, we do have the final wall constructed. Uh, so no more dealing with biters on Nalvis. We've pretty much got everything on lockdown and automatically resupplied and very, very well defended. So no worries there. I could... Uh, well, I'll wait till this particular solar panel wall is finished before we do that, but... I've got a lot of territory where I can, where we're already getting solar panels and accumulators and substations uh, delivered, and there's a bot network, so I can just increase our whole power network by dragging this out. Do you have to do the space science on that moon, or can you find a bigger planet with more space to do it? Uh, the I think moons just count as planets as far as uh, where you're allowed to build things is concerned. 
Um, hold on a sec. Where are we going? Over here? Roboport off. Oh, we don't actually have the ghosts here yet. Um, I want to add... Uh, drills to this until I start seeing dips in uh, the power management thing. Oh, that's getting close already. I think one more row of this and we're going to go over. Just half a row, actually. We're very very slowly losing accumulator charge. I think that's perfect for now, actually. Can you do artillery trains? Yes, indeed. We do have a, a artillery train. It's a little... Oh, where is it? I left it over here. It's a small beam, but it gets the job done. In fact, I might just tidy up this little base over here because I think it's probably going to send attacks at the wall a bit more frequently than I would like. Better to get them to attack now. Um, but after that I think we'll just have the train go home. What do core drills do? So core mining drills create uh, core fragments. No matter where you place them, they give you the same amount. Uh, they are very power expensive and they give you diminishing returns. So with the space, with the amount of drills that we're going to have in one or two of these blocks, we're very much well into the diminishing returns. Um, even with this many drills, we're very much into diminishing returns. Um, if I add or remove one, you can see 14.91% effective, 14.74% effective. Uh, so each additional drill is only giving us a bit more uh, core fragments per second. Currently we're at 105 when this thing is going at full speed. Um, if I fill this entire thing with 64 of these, I believe the uh, the rate that we get is something like 127 core fragments per second, and currently we're looking at 105. Uh, but it's not, at this rate, it's not truly 127 uh, per second if I fill this whole thing, because we have to keep switching them off because we're using too much power. Um, but yeah, once you have core fragments, Depending on what type of core fragment it is, you'll get different things out of it. But and, and the type of core fragment depends on the planet. But basically you break them down and get, uh, in this case, 6 iron, 5 copper, 5 coal, 5 stone, a 5% chance of 1 uranium ore, 2 vulcanite, a little bit of crude oil, and some water. And once you got that, you got to deal with filtering all the outputs. Um, you could have a bunch of filter inserters take different resources from the pulverizers directly, or you could have a shared belt and then uh, filter them out like so. Either way, um, you're going to need, whenever you're dealing with filtered outputs, you're going to need some storage, and you're going to have a problem eventually with, for example, mining far more coal than you're using compared to iron and copper. Um, unsurprisingly, I suppose, iron is by far what we're using the most. And we're... that's actually getting to be a problem. We're very full on copper storage at this point. We have added... oh my god. Yeah, this is actually 574,668. It's a little bit hard to read. Yeah, that uh, this is a lot of copper. Uh, about 574,000. Not counting what's in these chests down here. Uh, copper plate is a bit more storage dense. Oh my god, that's full as well. Um... 
I feel like a digit must be wrong here because, yeah, that's 1.1 million. That should be 1-1. One, one. I, I think we're off by a digit with that particular display. Um, but yeah, we've got 1.1 million copper plate just in this uh, storage area. I think it, we're actually overdue. We need to make... Um, hold on a sec. Let's get this out of my inventory. And I'll place some rail while I'm here. I actually designed a block that is literally just going to be to waste resources. Uh, this is necessary because of what's happening right now. Um, I also made some... That's odd. Why is there no coal here? Did we actually use up all the coal by having the first coal liquefaction area? No, there's enough coal here for... Oh, it doesn't... I should probably change that a little bit. Um, there's a reason that I have this combinator uh, not outputting unless there's like, I think it's 9,000 of whatever resource. We need to make sure there's a little bit extra um, beyond a full train load, but I think 9,000 is, is a bit too much, especially considering the number of resources we're trying to share here. So we've got two resources at 8.4 thousand. Why don't we do that? And then, uh, same thing over here. Actually, let's use this. There we go. So now this station is reporting that coal is available for pickup. And we've got a train on the way picking up coal. That'll help. But yeah, as you can see, uh, once, uh, once these chests are full, um, our output is going to stop. A Royal PS2K. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're going, uh, doing well. Got to start spending? Yes, indeed. Well, that's nerdy. <laughs> yeah. Is Factorio. Um, okay, so we need to make... Did I place all this rail? I think I did. Got a blueprint handy for this. Uh, we need to make an item remover. Literally, the job of this thing is just to destroy items. Um, I've almost finished designing it. I didn't actually do the settings for the LTN stations yet, but I think that's all that's left. We're going to need 32 delivery cannons. Looks cool, though. Nice. Never played SpaceX before. What kind of stuff do you end up using 1 million copper for? Honestly, I didn't think we would end up with a million copper stored here this quickly. Um, the point of the storage uh, partly was really just to buy us time um, before we build this thing that we're building right now. Hey, Mucky. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, yeah, I built a storage system. Um, we're storing various things here. Uh, I, I set it up so it's sort of universal. You just put in a constant combinator, one stack of whatever you're trying to store here, and it does the rest. Um, yeah, the, the idea, apart from, you know, having lots of whatever resource available, was to buy some time um, before we build this thing, which is going to be arbitrarily destroying items because otherwise we can't make more items. Um, I was going to dump them into the sea, but it turns out if you, if you aim a delivery cannon here, um, 
most of the items in the shell will be destroyed if it doesn't land at a, uh, what is it called? Um, delivery cannon chest, but not all of them. So you're eventually going to accumulate a lot of items on the ground. Um, that's why I'm going to aim them right here. And we're going to have Remind the bots yourself, pick the stuff up. Confidence is a slow and insidious killer. Yes, indeed. The West dude, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, we've already got deliveries here. I... This is probably fine, but I want to double check it. Okay, for starters, this should be really, really low priority. Um, uh, request priority, negative one million. Because obviously the last place we want to send any resource is to be just arbitrarily destroyed. Uh, this stuff is not going to be destroyed, it's just used for making the shells. And down here we're going to have to do the same thing with coal and stone. Um, I'm tempted to just copy paste this and we'll edit it a little bit. Uh, so that's going to be coal and stone. And then we just have to change the filters and that's it, I think. don't have any filter inserters on me right now. Alright, let's go back to base for now. You can repurpose the items as a target for various weapons. What do you mean by that? Uh, let's get rid of these drills. And I think everything else will sort itself out. Is my Factorio volume lower than usual? Yes, it is. There we go. Explosive waste management? Yes, indeed. AKA blow things up. That's what we're doing. Oh, um, did I request cannons? They should be here somewhere. It's under... Oh, there it is. Oh, if you search here, it highlights it. Nice. Okay, uh, we need 32 delivery cannons, please. There are six on the way. Um, I don't remember if I automated these. Nope, here they are. It's because we limited them to not very many at all. Um, I mean, I didn't expect to have to place a million delivery cannons all at once. Okay, for now, let's build what we can. I guess we'll build this part first so that we can get rid of this train.
Oh, thank you, Evil Pla. Uh, so let's see. We need to pick up a bunch more belt and filter inserters. Uh, let's make it a hundred. And what are you doing? You're waiting for your turn to come in here as well. Did I not set a train limit of one over here? I did not. Um, I didn't set the sizes either. There we go. And over here. Don't worry, that's not a mistake. We do want a trash train here. Um, haven't actually added anything to this part for... Okay, how am I going to fit this chest if... I guess we could move this over here. And if we do this like so... This one like so... That'll be fine. Face palm? Face palm. Let's grab some more stuff. With our very, very slow jetpacks. Wait, are those chests actually full? Oh. That's kind of weird. I deliberately left this uh, not configured quite correctly because it was doing a cool Mexican wave thing, but I didn't expect it would end up not filling up. Uh, I can't remember how it's set up wrong though at the moment. Each is less than or equal to zero. Each divided by 16. That, that all looks okay. Is there a wire missing or something? Maybe I should have written myself a note as to exactly how this was uh, set up wrong. Hmm. So the average is 12,000. And they do all seem to be why would why would it stop here of all places? It's got a balanced load. It got this far. Well, we're fully restocked, so I think I'll look at that later. Did we finish mining this coal? Not even close. There isn't room to. Um... Could definitely configure this while we're waiting. Whoa, okay. I think when you make a blueprint with um with delivery cannons, it actually includes the planet and coordinates. But obviously the coordinates are not relative to um the cannon itself. Delivery cannon is in the way. What? Alright, so that should be correct now. Um, we'll have to wait for the rest of the cannons to be here to set them up properly. A problem for future T-Hacks? Yes. Well, I, I want to use the time... I, I don't want to keep the bots idle while we're building something that's kind of big. Not the biggest build that we've done by far, but it does take a few trips, I think. Why is this train still here? Oh, this is 
I didn't even remember that we had an explosives train. That's weird. Uh, oh, that's right. We did explosives pick up from coal liquefaction. That's cool. All right, so now it's your turn. Fantastic. And you are also queuing up here because train limit one was not set uh, when we built this thing. A Loreen Llama, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. No need to worry, just add it to the to-do list. <laughs> yes, indeed. But that's a problem for future me. No worries. Uh, so you were not feeling too well earlier. You're feeling better, I hope? Alright. Uh, that is a lot of trains that have queued up to drop off copper plate here just in the short amount of time that I uh, forgot to have a train limit. And it's causing traffic jams. This is why I like to keep train limit at one almost always. Not really. Bad news is I'm supposed to start working in about a week starting a new job. And I got sore throat again? Oh no. I get a sore throat from my current job as well. It's actually sort of an occupational hazard. I have to, I try to be very careful. Um, let's just say certain phone scripts are ridiculously wordy. And definitely written by people who never have to speak them out but if you if you speak naturally you're going to lose your voice you have to sort of train yourself to speak more softly that's my luck ouch all right let's pick up some more delivery cannons and then i think that's it there's just a couple of uh circuits to set up for the ltn stations and then I have to set the targets for um, for the cannons. I think we're also missing um, low density structures and heat shielding in the train system. So we don't have to worry that cannon shots are going to go off before we're ready. I'm pretty sure. Uh, how many more cannons have I got? Nine. How many do I need? More than nine. This is eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. That's gonna take a couple of minutes. Let's go do the train logic and maybe when we come back we'll be ready. How are you doing? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad at all, actually. This is my first day off. Uh, I'm going to have five days off this week in a row. Quite pleased with that, actually. So, getting plenty of rest and nice long streams. Factorio vacation? Yes, indeed. If I have any say in it, I'm um, going to find myself with a job that's uh, kind of minimal hours but stable. I don't think that's ever going to happen. Every job has to be all or nothing. And temporary. And precarious. Okay. Uh... So we just need a handful more. Oh, I should have remembered to do the train logic first. Uh, getting a bit of uh, UPS drop. Let me just remember to put this thing in performance mode. And I've been thinking maybe it would be worth the trouble to try to set up my old machine uh, dedicated to do the streaming part, because I do not get 
UPS drops under save without streaming. And from what I've heard, it does not take a powerful machine at all uh, to do the dedicated streaming side of things. Okay, so this stacks to 50 in space exploration, so this will be 8,000. Um, I don't know if red is the color that we want to represent low density structures, but I don't know how much better we can do. Yellow, maybe. Oops. That should be an each. Uh, there's obviously not really a black color. Hey, I am Vera. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Thank you for the follow. And I'm just gonna... It literally mo won't make a difference. Um, like the lights... Use colors doesn't do anything with black or gray, but I'll do that just for the sake of it. Um, these stack to 50 or is it 100? Heat shielding. Um, I thought it was 100, but I could be wrong. Uh, what, where did it go? Yeah, I think it's 50. Okay then. Uh, so that would be 8,000 as well. Um, this is wrong. We need... Uh, 57,600 for each. So, whoops, wrong button. Heat shielding. And LDS. Maybe I should set the requests lower for this because the throughput for how many we need is really, really low. Um... Let's just set it to one train load for each. And well, that'll mean that'll mean we won't send a train unless we until we completely run out. Although there is room on the belts and stuff, uh, I'd still rather have a little bit of a buffer. That'll be fine. And if that's the case, then our display for how many resources we have here doesn't really make sense. But for now, I won't mess with it. Uh, so this goes here, and this goes here. And that should, that should be it. Except for connecting this thing. Love the streams? Thank you. Uh, so we just need four more uh, delivery cannons. I'll get some concrete so that we're not aiming at a ghost. And that should be it. Concrete. Concrete. There it is. And regular concrete. And I don't think... We're going to need any cannons after this. So let's set that back to zero requests. All right, so there's our target. There's our last few cannons. The rest can go in the trash. Uh, I think we set up most of the coal ones correctly. There we go. Let's just double check and make sure we get everything. That is definitely not where we want to aim right now. I love how they're all defaulting to... Wait, what? 
Oh, there we go. I love how they're all defaulting to destroying our solar panels somewhere. I think that's one of our defensive walls as well. Boop. Uh, copy, paste, paste, paste. And that should be it. So as soon as we get uh, heat shields and low density structures in the rail network, uh, we should start... Oh, we also need to get some logistic bots here. I think we need about 400 to... We're, we're never going to be firing all of these at once, but theoretically we would need about 400 uh, to pick up all of the excess stuff that gets dropped here. Uh, the timer is so that we send the bots to pick up... We, we fire all of these at once, and then the bots come out and pick up what remains and then get out of the way uh, before the uh, the next shot. So we're going to need 400 uh, construction bots. And then for now I'll just be a little bit lazy and put heat shielding and LDS back into the rail network from the main bus base. I don't think we've got that many bots stored here. That is like half what we need. Um, can we maybe speed this up a little bit? Cool. Now the fast inserter can't keep up. And now this inserter can't keep up. And now the long arm inserter can't keep up. Fantastic. Uh, why don't we just put a stack inserter over here for the moment. And now the machines over here can't keep up. Uh, we're looking at just under one robot per second now. Hmm. How many have we got? Uh, 334? That's probably enough. Probably. It's not enough if we are wasting literally every resource constantly. I don't think we really have to worry about that. Let's so make sure this is on its own separate little robo network. And set our instruction bot requests back to 50. And then put these two things in the rail network. Um, where would be the best place to do that? I could go to the trouble of making a uh, low density structure and heat shielding uh, building areas, but I want to see results right now. So uh, LDS we've already got on the main bus here. Uh, heat shielding we should have had on the main bus, but we ran out of space. Um. It's part of science. Here it is. I don't think we've got any beacons on these things yet. We're only looking at half a heat shield per second. Um, it is in the robot network. We could probably just bot it, honestly. Uh, it is going to take a while to get a train load, though. At this rate. Might have to add some... Beacons or something? Well, whatever the case. 
Um, let's add another dodgy station over this way. And we could do a fancy dual station here with the precise loaders. Uh, I was going to say I can't be bothered, but that's a lie. So we're going to need a balanced loader here. Let's see if I can do this whole thing from memory. Uh, we need filter inserters. Same thing over this side so far. We need red wire touching every single inserter. Like so. We need green wire touching every fourth, uh, one inserter for each uh, cargo wagon. And we need to get the negative of what's already in the train. Uh, connecting to the logistic train stop output will give us a positive signal of what the train is asking for. Uh, subtract what is actually in the train from that. And then we get a decider combinator here, constant combinator here, uh, connect that, connect that. And here we have a bunch of signals that we do not want to pass into this system. Uh, this one. This one. And this one. Theoretically, all of these signals as well, but we're not going to be sending any any trains other than cargo trains over here. Okay, so here we're going to say each greater than zero output, each input count, which just means we get rid of every anything that's a zero or negative signal. Getting rid of a zero signal is implicit with... Uh, uh, combinators in Factorio, but the point is we're not going to have these encoded positions being passed through this stuff. So after that, let's get rid of the flashing for now. After that, we need to get whatever thing the train is asking for. So maybe it's uh, low density structures, maybe it is heat shielding. So we use each uh, divided by 24 chests, output each, and then we do the same thing, but we output S for stack size. Unfortunately, when we set stack size, we can't just say, I, I would really li like it if we could set the control signal to whatever the filter is on a um, stack filter inserter. But because we can't do that, we need one more combinator over here to do this. So that is going to go to every single inserter. But wait, there's more. After the divided by 24, we need the remainder. Uh, 24, output each, and then the remainder we're only going to send to one stack filter in Pizzerta per cargo wagon. So then we go each divided by four, output each, and output S for stack size. Uh, so that is going to go there. 
and this green wire is going to touch one inserter per cargo wagon. And if you were trying to precisely load any number of things, you would need another pair of uh, combinators up here, but we're only going to summon trains for a full load. So because there's four cargo wagons, that's always going to be divisible by four. Uh, so this is the end of the circuit. This is actually nuts. It's uh, slightly complicated, yeah. It took me a lot longer to figure this out than it took me to reconstruct it right here. I'm, pre I'm like 90% sure that is actually correct and complete. If so, I'm kind of pleased with myself. We'll soon find out. Um, we also need some balanced loaders. This one, we're just going to take... Um, whoops. Uh, you can stay. That's fine. We're just going to take some LDS straight off the main bus. No need for bots. And for this one, uh, what's 8,000 divided by 24? 333. Uh, so we'll put some requester chests here. Um, in fact, I might just set the requests quite low. I don't care too much about uh, how long it takes to load the station. Um, because we're only going to be using it for pretty low throughput. Um, and by the time that we are doing high throughput, I want to make an entire rail block uh, to sort this out. Oh, uh, we're getting a bit carried away here. So now we need to get the average of all of these chests. and output it to each of these inserters. And the inserters also need to read what is in their individual chests. And the setting for them is uh, LDS less than or equal to zero. Zero is going to represent that we have an average amount in the chest. And set stack size LDS. Uh, we could make it more universal by having an everything here, but obviously if we're using a control signal, it's going to be less universal. Unless we add a, com a combinator over here to set stack size. Um, so we're going to copy paste that. That includes the red wire. And then here we're going to get the negative average of what's in the chest by dividing by negative 24. Um, and then one final touch. Uh, we're going to make it so that each inserter thinks that there's a little bit more LDS in its own chest um, so that unless it falls Unless it gets a, just a bit more ahead of the average, it's going to swing at full speed. And there we go. So then we're going to do uh, mostly the same thing over here. Except I can't copy-paste some of these settings because we already put um, requester chests here. Uh, let's make sure they're on... I think the default is read contents. Unfortunately, you can't do read contents and set requests at the same time. And then connect that here. 
Uh, obviously, our control signal is not going to be LDS. It's going to be heat shielding. I did this wrong. Whoops. How about we just get the bots to get rid of this for now? So, I'll start with this. And conveniently, that clears all of our settings. We can copy paste. Uh, well, not copy place, uh, paste. We can place requester chests on top of all this and preserve all the wire settings. This should have been heat shielding. Um, I think I'll set this really low, actually. I want the bots to stop bringing... Because we've only got like one chest of heat shielding at the moment. I want to make sure it's balanced to begin with. So this one is going to be heat shielding. Um, also, I just realized we absolutely don't need these. Oh. I'm a derp. Okay. We need the requesters to be over here. And we need these to be regular chests. Okay. Much better. What? Alright, that's fine. And last but certainly not least, we need to tell LTN what we've got in this station and also add some settings to it. So, uh, long trains only, minimum train length six, one train at a time. Uh, provide threshold is 160 stacks, and I think that's actually all we need. So then you connect the chests. Oh, uh, we don't want this green wire and this green wire to touch because it'll mess up the balanced loaders. Um, on the other hand, I could just make this specific. Instead of adding a couple of combinators over to the left that are basically just going to be one-way pieces of wire, um, we can just set this to a specific signal. And that should be fine. Okay. So then we can connect our chests like so. And once we've got... What's going on with these uh, loaders right here? Oh, that's... That needs to be heat shielding. That's not right. Of all the things I... Oh! Okay, so for a loader as opposed to an unloader, this should be a negative. Yeah, because all of the chests thought they had above average amounts. Or all of the inserters thought they had above average amounts of LDS in the chests. Uh, we want the opposite of that. So they'll keep going until they get 12 ahead of the average. Um, that's really not something we need with this sort of setup, actually. It's probably totally fine to just not bother with that here. But when you're doing a balanced unloader, uh, you want the stack inserters to be able to go as fast as possible. Um, and you also don't want them to all end up with a stack size of one at the same time. If they're perfectly balanced. So now that now all that remains is to see a train come here. 
uh, once this hits 8,000, about two seconds later, LTN is going to create a schedule, unless we don't have any trains ready. Why does that one say no path? Um, oh, because there's no path. Because I forgot that I messed around over here with the rail. Let's pick up some rail before we go. And I don't want to miss this. I think I've got time. I can view it remotely anyway. This will go here. That'll be fine. Gonna need some more power. Let's check on our uh, new train stop. We got 8.1 thousand. So an LTN train should be coming any minute now. That is a full train load, right? Considering we've got uh, seven stacks in each of these 24 chests, that's definitely more than 160 stacks. Here it comes. All right, so this one is coming to pick up uh, low density structures. And if we get no inserters sticking out, after this train comes and gets its uh, uh, low density structures, then we've probably set everything up correctly. All right. While we're waiting for the train, oh, uh, we need some more signals. When I changed all of my logistic requests, I forgot. Um, I forgot to ask for a lot more chain signals. We generally need to carry way more chain signals than regular signals. Uh, let's check on that train real quick. It's still in traffic. All right, let's head back for now. Oh, just in time. Fantastic. That is not looking correct, to say the least. So what's going on here? Oh, I think the only thing I did wrong here is uh, I didn't set the conditions on all of the inserters. So it's quite likely that we're going to get a couple of inserters sticking out at the end here. Unless there was a multiple of four. Well, even if we did have a multiple of four that was already in here, I don't know if that would help. Yeah, so these inserters sticking out at the end is exactly what we're trying to avoid. Um, not just because right now it's preventing the system from loading anymore. Um, that's That wouldn't have happened in the first place. But the issue is... Is this not... Oh, it doesn't have a path. Why does it not have a path? Because I haven't signaled this part yet. Uh, regular signal on this side, chain signal on this side, wrong. Wrong SOS, 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 wrong SOS. Messing up the inserters, yes indeed. 
All right, that should work. There we go. Okay, so we need to collect the LDS that's sticking out from these inserters. This should work correctly next time. Um, I also want to double check, but I'm pretty sure there should be no issues with uh, the train pathing into wherever it wants to go with this. Yep, yeah, that's totally fine. All right. So let's go fix up that other issue before we forget. Thanks for the bits, uh, West dude. And where was it? I flew past it. Oh, I think that's... I think we're just missing some uh, chain signals that I didn't drop yet. Also, this part we need to replace because there was uh, water here before. I'm not too worried about this part. The trains don't have anywhere to go there. All right. Did I not pick up the chain signals, though? I should definitely carry more than uh, 50. And let's get most of this out of our inventory when we get back. Okay. How is our new station doing. Doesn't have another pickup yet. Oh, I think we used up all the LDS. Um, how are we doing for LDS production? Is there no steel? There's plenty of steel. Steel has been a problem for a while, but I think we solved it. I hope. LDS doesn't really have beacons? And it's going to be really difficult to place them with the layout that we've got currently. Hmm. Oh, we're also bottlenecking on glass, I guess. Which is not beaconed either. I think it's about time to start really expanding the rail system. Um, so LDS, let's see. Well, should we do LDS first or heat shielding? Or maybe we could do both in the same block because I don't think they're going to take up that much space. Twenty seconds. All right, so glass, copper plate, steel, and plastic. We've actually got in the rail system already. So it's literally just a matter of bringing those resources to one place. And I think this would be the place to do it, or here. I forget what I wanted to build here. I think it was another smelter. Oh, timing. We're making mostly steel at the moment. It seems like that's always the case. Still not seeing that much iron. All right, what should we do first? Low density structures don't use, oh, they do use iron, just not directly. Uh, 40 iron, 10 copper, 10 glass. Whereas heat shielding is a lot less iron. Maybe we'll do that first. Especially since um, I think heat shielding... Well, heat shielding might actually be faster at this point in the main bus base. 0 0.5 per second consistently-ish versus... Okay, LDS is actually a lot faster. 
assuming we're not bottlenecked on something else, like glass. I could get rid of this and squeeze in another train drop-off somewhere and bring glass in from the rail network. Um, I'm pretty sure we've got zero. How do we have no glass here? There's plenty of sand here, plenty of glass here. We're literally full on sand on this one. How could there be no sand over here and no glass? That seems pretty strange. No sand, no glass. No sand, no glass. There's only one smelter that has sand and glass. Did I mess up the requests or something? Oh. No, I th think... Let's uh, check this right now. If sand is less than 128k output, negative 32k sand, and that goes to LTN train stop input, we are requesting 32k sand right here. Is it because the request stack threshold is high? I don't think so. Do we have sand up here? We have 230,000 sand in these chests. And it is definitely being reported to LTN. Hmm. I wonder why. All right, let's play around with the settings. I think setting this higher than a full train load is a problem, but I thought we did that elsewhere and it wasn't a problem. Yeah, we've done it. Um... Okay, I could be wrong. Anyway, I think some of these combinators are superfluous now um, because we figured out why uh, one of the ways that LTN was overloading stations is because it assumes trains are dead after 10 minutes by default. You can actually change that. So we didn't get 17 trains sent to a station just because there was a traffic jam. And it looks like we've already got sand coming here. Good. So I think I literally just had to change this combinator. And we do have uh, 160,000 glass or so in the rail network already. So let's see, glass, check, copper plate, check, steel, check, plastic, check, uh, sulfur, check, stone tablet, not directly. Uh, it's far denser to transport stone brick. So yes, we've got everything in the rail network to make this stuff. Is it worth making another Omni smelter at this point? Why are we not smelting here for now? Probably the conditions that I described earlier. Yeah, now it looks like we're going to make iron plate. Um, unless? Oh, we're not making iron plate because there's no iron ore in these chests. Okay, so that is actually working, believe it or not. If we're getting more of these, if we're getting multiple furnaces that are switched off for the moment, uh, I don't think we need more furnaces. So let's add some rail blocks here.
and we'll see how it goes for whether we combine uh, heat shielding and LDS together. They don't, they only have steel in common, so it really wouldn't make that much sense. And I need to go back for a lot more rail. I think it's about a thousand for one of these blocks. 1.3 thousand. That's if there wasn't some rail there already. Let's grab all of the rail. And... Nope. Don't take my stuff just yet, please. Nope. Nope. Oh, I have no more room. There we go. Don't take his stuff. Okie dokie. Nom nom nom. I kind of wish there was something between the media point defenses and the ones that work for the entire surface. Because I'd kind of like to let most of the medias buy, as long as they're not going to hit anything. But I wouldn't want to have to put point defenses everywhere. Something like the point defenses, but with a lot more range, would be good. Or if the planetary media defenses could just calculate if the media is going to hit anything and let it go if it's going to miss. Uh, oh yeah, we're waiting for heat shielding. How much heat shielding do we have in that train station already? Only 1.7 thousand. Um, I might just uh, temporarily make it so that a train is allowed to come. With far fewer uh, resources here. Okay, is that going to be heat shielding? Yes, good. And then... Because we're not doing a full train load, we might get inserter issues. Let's go place these last pieces. Why is it asking for... Oh, yep. That's an inserter issue, all right. Just not one I anticipated. But it is for the same reason. Off you go. Got my laundry in to get ready. Didn't get rained on or anything. I was talking to Logibots. Yes, indeed. Uh, so the first thing we're going to want to do here is put rail across the top for the drop-off stations. We're not going to need more than four for low density structures. Um, that's going to be a good sink of copper, but also steel. But 
but first I want to see how cannon system gets started. Yellow inserters, yes indeed, uh, because we're literally only doing two items per second here for those resources. Here it comes. So we've got these inserters on a timer where they're only allowed to pick something up uh, once per 30 seconds. Uh, it does take like four or five ticks for the inserters to actually work. If you set this to like T has to equal zero or T has to be less than two or something, um, you'll see the green light on this inserter just flicker and it won't actually um, do its job. I forgot I had my RoboPort active, but it looks like the bots that we have... This is actually making me a little bit nervous. Why are there a few items left on the ground? Okay. RoboPort off this time. Wait, was that destroying... Why is iron here? We did set this to negative a million request priority, right? I think this iron came here before... Uh, before it was set. I don't want to be wasting iron, so, um, and we maybe not. The whole point of this is to keep the iron flowing. What's a better way to do this? It's not like I can really set up a train system to come pick this up. Uh, why don't we get rid of this for now? Um, if I put it in a storage chest, the bots are going to steal it. That should help. All right, so that'll get that sorted out sooner or later. Um, I also forgot to set up a hole drop off properly because we didn't have the filter inserters on us at the time. So that is coal. Uh, this needs to know what we've got here. That's fine. I think that's it, except that this says copper. That should be it. Team meeting in four minutes. Rip. Okay. So there's still some iron in these things. Can I steal it with fewer clicks? I don't think so. Okay. Iron is probably what we'll never have to waste here, but I'd rather be thorough than find out the hard way. Yeah, this seems to be working just fine. Uh, why is copper... Wait, why was there copper in this particular belt. That's looking a bit strange. Oh, I was going to say if I put these in like uh, provider chests or something, the bots are going to take it, but there's no actual logistic bots here. There's only construction bots. 
So we're never going to have to worry about uh, bot attrition for this little area because it only affects logistic bots. Cool. So that will probably be enough to make room for um, all the iron we can eat. Considering that one of these can do 35 copper per second, we've got two of them. We're not going to have them fully utilized for a long time though, so call it maybe 40 copper per second. That's if we're not consuming any copper at all from the base. Um, each of these gets rid of 50 copper whenever it shoots. And that's going to be in about 10 seconds. Okay, what the hell? How are we... Oh, did I set these wrong? I think... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got some copper requests in some of these buffer chests. That's how that was happening. I thought there was an issue with the belts themselves somehow. All right. Might be better... I want to find out if I can do this, actually. Um, well, let's go find another delivery cannon. It might be better to turn the stone into uh, landfill, if we can shoot landfill out of a cannon. Not much of a cost in... Doesn't look like we can shoot landfill out of a cannon. Nope. Okay then. Obviously if we really wanted to up the density we could like smelt the copper into plate before shooting it away but I don't think that's what we're looking for. I, I, I don't think we want to spend the energy on that. We're already down to 724 uh, heat shielding over there. Okay, let's drop off some of this rail and start figuring out how we're gonna... I, I think I will do the heat shielding first. Also, this would have been a lot faster. I doubt we're ever gonna need more than one of these areas for uh, heat shielding. We will need four stations, though. Which is to say, two train stops. I'm going to avoid actually placing the logistic train stops until we're ready. Because LTN will schedule a stop long before this is finished being built. Let's see. Stone brick, steel, and sulfur is actually all we need. Uh, we need a lot of stone tablet, not much steel, and a bit of sulfur. Just thinking about the stacks of what comes in the train. Stone brick gets turned into stone tablet. Uh, at a ratio of 1 to 4, unless we use productivity modules, which we may as well because it's super fast. And... I think it's going to be quite slow and we're just going to have an overabundance of whatever... We're definitely only going to have one steel plate station. 
Uh, one sulfur should be enough. And... Yeah, I don't think any particular station is going to need to have, like, two stations as opposed to one. So we're, we're going to have three drop-offs up here. Uh, we need to figure out how to fit this together. So... How many inputs is it? It's three inputs. I think that's the same as green circuits, right? No, it's only two inputs. Except green circuits need... Uh, green circuits are way, way faster. It was actually really difficult to design this to fit together with beacons and also have room for the massive input and output. But I don't think we're going to have as much of a problem this time. Say hi and then lurk immediately. Yes, indeed. Uh, let's figure out how fast this is going to be. I definitely want productivity modules. We need power to test the rate with a rate calculator, with a beacon, and we need to figure out our ratios because we're going to need to make the stone brick. Actually, how fast is this? Uh, this is already 13.5 stone tablet per second. Can we do... Okay. So 3.6 steel, 14 sulfur. I think those could share a belt, and stone tablet will have to be on its own belt. Um, each individual machine is only looking at 4.5 stone tablet. Uh, more importantly, v like 1 point... less than... 2.5 items per second for the other two resources. So I think we can get away with long arm inserters. And instead of... Um, well, actually... Do we... Are we going to want to have a row of machines making stone tablet right next to this thing. I'm guessing the ratio is going to be not that... It's going to be hardly any stone tablet machines. I stand correct... Oh, wait, never mind. Uh, so this looks like about double what we actually need. This is still more than we need, but I think 1 to 8 is going to be not good enough. Yeah. What about 2 to 12? I've run out of productivity modules. Let's ask for a few more this time. And we're going to need some more speeds as well. Don't know that we'll be using any efficiencies over here. And what am I limiting these to? That is a bit too limited. I'm still trying to think of a good way to have uh, soft limits on building items. So we could have it so that until we have 50 productivity modules, this thing will go at full speed. 
and then instead of like limiting it to say 250 we could let it pretty much fill this chest but I want it to slow down after 50. Um, we could do something like this would definitely require a combinator but in this case a high throughput item like uh, green circuits we could put a bit of wire here that only lets one green circuit through at a time, but it only does that if we've got a certain number of productivity modules. Um, but that's already starting to add up to like more combinators that I want to use for something like this, because I would like to apply this kind of logic to literally everything that we build. Um, I want it ideally it would be like if you could set the clock speed and reduce it based on how many you have. Uh, but for now, back to designing our heat shield factory. So if it's 2 to 12, we, get, we fall a bit short. Uh, that is way more than enough stone tablets. And this is significantly less than enough stone tablets. I feel like we're going to need quite a lot of these machines to get a good ratio. TRJNZ, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Oh, that's pretty close, but it's just barely short. Also, that is significantly more than a blue belt, so we're going to want to space these things out. Or maybe we could just have these at the top and then... Um... Well, the thing is... Okay, 28 plus 7, 35, that is still significantly less than a blue belt for the long arm inserter stuff. Um, we could... I just want to double check something. Let's say you need two full blue belts uh, for the different resources. Does this fit if we do something... Surely there's a pattern that we can use here. And then something like this. That doesn't look quite right. No, it's going to be like, uh, like that, I think. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay, that's not difficult. So, if uh, if the long arm inserters can't keep up, we'll just have to do something like that. But I think they will keep up. Each machine uh, is just going to need like less than uh, like two point less than two point three items per second in total from the outside belt. Been lurking for an hour or so. I've never done an SE run. Figured I'd see if anything else was on. No worries. Um, the only thing is, if we're going to have a belt go all the way down here, depending on how long this is going to be, uh, we're going to need like two blue belts for the inside track. 
So how many is this? Uh, 16, we'll do 8 machines in. If that goes here... And this goes here... Then we're gonna need like... Uh, underground coming in from over this way. And the stone tablets could go like that. Better latency today, only one second. Nice. Baker Staunch, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, so how many heat shields are we looking at here? Only 4.75 per second. So there's no danger whatsoever of having any problems with the output uh, bottleneck, like with green circuits where we needed um, four blue belts for output, uh, like one, one blue belt for each of these uh, sets of eight uh, green circuit machines, which was pretty hard to squeeze in on top of the stone brick, uh, stone tablet and... Um, copper wire inputs. This one is obviously going to be a lot easier. And I'm not going to worry too much about using all of the space that we have either, I think. Um, on the other hand, if we need... let's say we do a row of 16. Uh, if we need 72 stone tablet... how much stone brick does that imply? We need four of these. Um, I can't really... Oh, this is 73.92. That's actually really close to... Wait, how did I miss this earlier? That is an excellent ratio. Oh, I see what I did there. The beacon isn't touching this one. Okay, well, whatever the case. Uh, it's obviously going to be four machines as opposed to three. Uh, if we're making 72, 74 stone tablet per second, we'll only need 14 stone brick. Okay, that makes it easy. Um, so that's not even a yellow belt of stone brick to support all of this. I don't know why my bots are not picking this up. Where did they go? Um... Bots? Hello? How did I... I have construction bots. Oh, my batteries are empty. Okay, cool. At least that makes sense. Okay. So I think we can just snuggle up our beacons right next to uh, the final product machines. Actually, it'll just do it like that. Uh, not like that, actually. Let's figure out where the inserters are going to go. I would like to have uh, substations in the middle for this. I'll make sure it's powered for the rate calculator. This is only two... Point, it's less than 0.3 per second. Uh, for the outputs, so anything other than yellow makes no sense. Oh, keep doing that. 4.5 stone tablet per second, I'm pretty sure fast inserters can handle that. And if not, we'll just run an upgrade planner over it. And then... Inserters. 
Is that gonna... Yeah, I think that's a repeating pattern, isn't it? Cool. Substations can go here. Oh, that's so close. What if they go here? Seems fine, except it's not touching this one, but we'll probably have a substation up here anyway for the um, stone brick machines. Mirror. And then we need a belt for output. And we could probably... Well, depending on what the stations can provide, we can probably fit quite a few of these. Uh, so this is only 14.4 steel plate per second. Uh, if we multiply that by 4, we're still well under the 90 per second of two blue belts. Uh, that's a lot more sulfur, though. 230 sulfur per second. Um, that's even more than four blue belts. We could do... We could do this three times. Provided we're happy to... Well, actually... I was trying to calculate... Uh, which station we should have one more of earlier. Maybe we could do double sulfur. Uh, let's say, let's see how many of these we could fit. Just approximately. Uh, that's not going to fit together quite like that unless I do something. I don't know if I can do something more clever with the, the belts that are sticking out there for the underground. In fact, there's literally no room to do that. Actually, we could do it like this. It does have the long arm picking up from the underground belt there, but it doesn't look that bad, right? There we go. So we should be able to fit these uh, more than close enough together that we can fit more than the stations can handle. We could maybe squeeze in one more. We cannot squeeze in one more. So let's put that right about in the middle. And supposing, okay, I sometimes forget how slow my bots are. Uh, we're going to have to finish placing a bunch of these before we can check the rate calculator again. Okay. I'm actually a little bit surprised how long it's taking. Let's give him a hand, shall we? Uh, that didn't work properly. That 
that's pretty close to done. Getting a bit low on energy. Okay. Maybe I should make more personal robopods. That seems like a good idea. I did add a bunch of stuff on the off chance I die and have trouble getting my armor again. Uh, I think I've forgotten to make batteries still. And I should probably set up uh, construction for personal robopods as well. Anyway, we'll get to that in a moment. Is this as good fast as the bots can get with research? I think we might be like one robot speed under the maximum we can get with our current types of... Nope, this is it. Yeah, I thought we dropped the research back to this in the testing area and the bots were faster than this. This is the best we can do with only rocket science packs. Um, so let's suppose we have five of these, because that's as many as we can fit. Uh, that would give us... 72 steel plate per second, which is totally fine from one station. Even a, rel a relatively compact one. Uh, 720 stone tablet. Um, would just be four times this, which is only 56 stone brick per second, which is one station. Um, so the only issue is sulfur. At 288 per second, um, what is it, 45 times six? Oh no. Okay, so that is seven blue belts we're going to need to support that. Uh, we can actually do that, though. The only question is how much space it takes up. Because if we have the southern uh, stations here outputting sulfur, and we use as much space as we need to get four blue belts... Let's get rid of those pipes. We can get a little bit more compact than this. I think I did that in the green circuit area. Yeah, so we've got four blue belts on each side for copper ore here. Uh, might be a good idea to steal this design, or parts of it. So yeah, if we use about this much space uh, for four blue belts on each side of um, sulfur. Then we should be able to keep up. It feels weird because once we actually get to these machines, it's stone tablet that we need to shovel in really quickly. And the long arm inserters are just picking up sulfur uh, relatively quite slowly. Um, but when it comes to what comes out of the station itself, sulfur is by far the fastest. Okay, so each one of these is going to need four stone tablet machines. Um, let's see how that f might fit together. So we definitely only need one... Oh, whoops. So this is going to have to come up here. Unlurk. Is this as good, fast as... Oh, yeah. Um, welcome back, Veldak. Okay, so this is... We, only, we definitely only need one belt for the input. Only 18 stone brick per second. Um, 
we will need to balance. Wait, I think it was, I think it was four of these to support each side, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, it was. Okay, we still only need one more beacon up here, so that's nice. Don't know if we can fit it like this with the substation. That should be fine. Okay. So this requires 36 stone brick per second. Still well under a blue belt. Uh, it's actually going to be really straightforward to... No, wait. Each of these has to be a blue belt, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we need significant... Wait, what? Oh, okay, yeah, we only need 72. 95 would be more than two blue belts, but that's only what we're outputting. So we need to saturate two blue belts. So it's going to look something like this. It's actually going to be pretty straightforward. And then on the other side, same thing. And it fits in a nice neat package at the top of the uh, row. If we multiply all this by five, we're still only getting slightly more than one blue belt of heat shielding. So I don't think we're going to have any trouble with uh, merging all of this together. Like, we're not going to need much space to do that. Uh, we're going to put the output station on this track here. Need to get him to fix that. No unlurk command. Unpro streamer. I'm sorry. Please forgive. Um, I think... I just want to copy the positioning of... Well, actually, I think this is a better way to do it. I just want to get the station in the same spot. And considering we're only producing 45 per, uh, 47 per second maximum, uh, we're definitely only going to need one station. I'm not actually going to build this part right now, I just want to see where it all fits. Um, let's turn off my RoboPort for a second. If we were to put these together where they are, we're not going to have room. We may not have room to get the inputs where they need to go with sulfur. Um, one, two, three, four, five. I am slightly upset that we have to do uh, like a four to five balancer here. Well, no, it's going to saturate it, so we don't have to worry about balancing. Um, but we do need the space to make that happen. Uh, the outputs... Maybe I should do the station down this side in fact, I think I like that idea a lot. So we're going to be able to have more room for bringing all of this stuff down. Bring it all to the middle. Sushi belt? Uh, not this time. 
There's not really any need for that. It's just going to be one output. <laughs> we could do a one one item sushi belt. Um, my bots are going to cry, but I'm going to have to move all of this stuff down. Alright, let's just do it, shall we? And how far down can we actually bring it? It's kind of hard to see. Oh, there we go. Probably there is fine. I think. Whoops. So we're going to need a splitter here. And then... Bring this over here. Splitter. Underground. Merge. The other three can merge to this one. Oh, this is gonna... Well, it's gonna take up some of the room that we might normally use for circuits, but it's actually going to be a really simple pickup station, so we're only going to need um, like one combinator for this whole thing. Uh, splitting. This is actually looking pretty good. The entire thing at max speed will produce just slightly more than one blue belt. So on either half of this, it really isn't a problem um, if we're all merging it into one belt. I mean for the input. Um, no, we need really high throughput uh, for some of these inputs. Um, so then we're going to need some stacks, a arithmetic combinator, usual circuitry. I've run out of fast inserters. Um, why don't I just copy some of this? What? Um, oh, that's facing the other way. Yeah, no, that's right. Okay. Each divided by negative 24 each. And these all need to say... Uh, this is a loader, so we don't need that... Um, we don't need to set the stack size at all if it's a balanced loader as opposed to unloader. I mean, it doesn't hurt, actually. Sure, why not? Set stack size, um, heat shield. And then copy paste it like that. And that will allow us to set up all of these settings before we even... Oh, that's already powered. Fantastic. I'm pretty sure that's all powered. Yep. Um, so that will allow us to set those settings without even having the combinators here. And then lastly, we want to tell LTN what the deal is with this stock. Large trains only, one at a time please, request threshold, 160 stacks, uh, provide threshold rather, 160 stacks, and that's it. Pickup stations are a lot easier than drop-off stations, and there's far 
fewer ways to mess them up. All right, we're going to need a lot of belt here. 1.3k, jeez. I wonder if I should use some underground belts just to save on how many items I need to place. And I haven't checked yet, but I'm pretty sure we're going to have no trouble whatsoever um, fitting the belts that we need over here. I'll, I'll leave that where it is. This one's going to change. Might have a new cat video. The internet needs more cat videos. I have expanded my module build. I have a buffer of 2.4k of each prod 3, speed 3, and efficiency 3. Nice. How is our... Did we run out of heat shielding? We did. Oh. Uh, we haven't run out of ammo, though, just yet. Okay. Let's go back to base and pick up some more stuff. Never mind. May as well put these signals here already. And this one, and this one. And I don't really see a need to have more than one train in this area. I decided that my endgame builds will contain a beacon with 10 speed 9s, 10 efficiency 9s, and where possible, prod 9 goes to machine. Nice. Uh, we already have those signals. And let's Remind go back. Yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. More trains? Possibly. Do we have any in the depots right now? We've got a couple. Oh, we've got quite a few, actually. For cargo, anyway. It is possible fluid wagons could sneak up on me. We do have one waiting in the depot. Or maybe small trains. Nope, we've got a few small trains. I would like to... Uh, to redesign a nice, big, juicy depot. Uh, maybe it could combine small and large trains, cargo wagon and fluid. Um... I don't know about having the cargo and fluid wagons in the same spot, though, because this thing that takes fluids that that the trains accidentally bring back, uh, it's pretty big. And it took a lot of designing to get that to all fit together. Have you considered using the supersonic train mod? No, I have not. Spent some time in Factory Planner, aiming at 960 SPM. Maybe overkill for SE, but we'll see. I need that much SPM because I'm going for infinite research for spaceships. Nice. Just no supersonic or fast trains, it's enough. It's enough that Clown Town cheats. Okay. Yeah, I heard they are literally so fast, it's almost like teleportation. Oh, how's our... How have our drills been going? They have been switching on and off, it looks like. Um, Actually, no, they've... 
They've been switching on and off just a little bit and only at night. This is actually perfect. This is like the absolute maximum that we can get out of our drills with the amount of power that we have at the moment. Um, this is still taking a while to build. I'm not seeing any train requests. Might have to check in on that. That's what I call them, teleporting trains. Yes, indeed. I need to bring a lot more belt. What? Oh, it's in my trash slots. Nope. Uh, the only little problem left to solve that I might find a bit irritating here is how do I split, um, how do I split 12 belts into 5? I'm sure there's a 12 to 5 balancer in here, but it's probably huge. That's a 12 to 4. I'm actually surprised there is, what is... I th think the coordinates on this uh, snap to grid might be a little bit off on this blueprint. I could be wrong. Dare I say, if we get rid of the snap to grid, that's going to make a lot more sense. Um, but yeah, we don't actually have a 12 to 5. Um, I'm fine with it if we have... What What about a 4 to 5? How big is that going to be? 4 to 5. That's actually pretty small compared to what I was expecting. Um, if I put it here, it doesn't really work. If I have all of those belts, like, face this way, and then it comes back around like this. But does it even matter, is the thing, because... We're going to have... By having four blue belts come out of one of these stations, or rather, eight blue belts out of both of them, um, we're going to have an abundance of... Sulfur. Like, it's going to saturate everything. So... Do we even need a balancer? I just have to make sure there's enough throughput to each half belt. Um, I do want to double check again though that it feels counterintuitive because we have to dump so much sulfur from the trains. Uh, but 21 sulfur 21.6 sulfur per second is indeed a little bit less than half a blue belt. So we need five half blue belts over here. Um, well, hang on, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, it's five per side. shouldn't be a problem. One blue belt could go to two of these, and the other could have a full blue belt. The other ones could have a full blue belt. Um, but if we're doing a balanced unload from the station... Okay, I th think we do... I think we do need to merge all of this and then split it. Ah, uh, that's kind of unfortunate. This is going to be a pain. Um, I'm just going to copy this over here in case I end up wanting to reference it again. But I'm thinking maybe we just... 
bring it all to the side. That's unfortunate. Go like that. Alright, that's looking pretty neat actually. So if we say no to this side, and then probably the same thing again. Um, these ones are going to look a little bit different. I've run out of express undergrounds. So if that goes there, and then, or maybe instead, yeah, let's get rid of this for a second. Bring this one down here. That goes there, that go Right, I forgot. Uh, that goes there, that goes there. Told him about that. Doesn't give us the fun in the form of getting run over by them as he enabled train paths. Enabled train paths. Does that mean you can tell trains not to run you over or something? He would still die with normal trains because he didn't watch minimap, but with supersonic cheating trains you don't need to. Because they're so fast they don't pass through where you're standing, I'm guessing. And there's no, like, delay where you walk onto the track later and then they get there later on. One man argument? Maybe. Who knows? Um, okay, so it's gonna look a bit like this, except uh, this is gonna go here, and then down here we're gonna do something similar. It actually is looking a lot neater. I think I like where this is going. And then we need a 4 to 5 from Rehnquist. Um, that almost... Yeah, that's gonna be a pretty good fit, kind of, sort of. What if I flip this around and... I wish there was a corner version of this. I'm not that good at, well, actually I'm not any good at trying to design my own um, uh, belt balances. I did convert belt balances into lane balances. I can grok that pretty well, but um, I've noticed, for example, that a corner 2-2 two -to -two lane balancer is by far the most compact. I was kind of hoping that would be the case for, say, 4-4. Four to four. Um, And I have tried to do these designs where you turn, like, a... where you take a 4-4 four to four belt balancer and somehow make it work around a corner. And I was hoping it would be more space efficient, maybe? But considering the undergrounds that you need, I don't know if that's feasible. But also, I'm just not that good at designing them. But obviously, what I'm really looking for right now is a 4 to 5 belt balancer that fits really nicely with this corner. Um do it up there, there's obviously no room. If I do it here, there isn't really room. If we do it like this... Um, I think that works. Just barely not running into the signals as well. This one's going to have to sort of squeeze over this way. But I guess that's fine. Uh, 
Oh, do we need a... Uh... I don't think we need lane balancing here because we've got the balanced unloaders and half of them go to one side of the belt and the other half the other side. So that's just going to go down here. And then on the other side we should have... Uh, if anything, I think we, maybe we have more space on the other side. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If this is less than seven tiles on this side, oh no. I hope by some coincidence of the way this... This isn't going to be an, an exact flip, this part, because um, you have to start with this direction, which is probably going to make things even worse. I think it is going to make things worse. Oh, does that actually... No, I don't think so. Okay. So if that has to go there, and then we get a four to five, and we want the squiggly bit on top to be like that, I think. Well, first of all, let's just double check these. That is correct. That looks good. Um, that is four. Yes. Okay. Four to five. And I think think this is the direction we want. Yeah, that looks right. One, two, three. Don't think this is going to be a problem at all, actually. This little bit of the belt is just going to be a bit more squiggly looking, I think. No, it's... Yeah, it's just one more tile. Okay, I don't know what I was worried about, actually. Alright, I can live with this. Um, so this goes here, and here, and here, and here. That's right, isn't it? Seems good. Cool. So then each belt goes to one of our sulfur half belts. It's debug option to show train path. You see the path before you move over the track. Ah, uh, yes. I think I've seen that. They move so fast if you watch the game area you can get motion sickness. Oh no. Okay, so we're going to do sulfur at these two stations. Uh, top left or top right is going to be steel, and the other one is going to be stone brick. Um, I don't think we're going to have much drama um, getting all the belt spaghetti past each other. Which side do we want the sulfur to be on, or does it... It probably doesn't matter, I just want it to be consistent, uh, aesthetically. Probably just do what comes naturally each time. Uh, so stone... not stone brick, um, steel is going to be on the opposite side of the belt of sulfur. 
So this, this, and this, and this are going to be steel. And I think we're going to get an exact mirror on the other side. Which is going to make it nice and easy. Uh, we've already got this belt here bringing steel to the middle. Uh, the only thing that I may have made difficult for myself in the end is getting stone where it needs to go, but I think that's not going to be a problem. Especially since we just need uh, one belt. Well, significantly less than one belt. 36, okay, it's more than half a belt. Um, so we're going to need that to look something like this. How far can this go and look symmetrical? That's good. I think that might not be perfectly symmetrical on the other side. Yes, it is. Cool. Uh, one, two, three, four, and that just leaves five. Um, considering that... I almost had a repeat of the whole... Wait, what? Uh-oh. 141 stone brick. Um, oh, that would be if all of the stone brick machines, were, uh, stone tablet machines were going full speed, which they won't, because we need, like, barely more than seven machines here, and we've got eight. Um, let's go get back and get some more stuff to drop. So once we place all of the uh, modules and stuff, we can get a better idea of how much stone uh, stone brick we actually need. But we're significantly overproducing uh, stone tablet, but we do need eight machines, I think, as opposed to seven. Um, I think once we do the math and see how many stone brick we actually need, uh, we'll find that it's probably not a problem, I hope. If we need more than two blue belts of stone brick, we're in big trouble. Okay. Um, should I pick up extra of anything? No, let's just go. Oh, mining productivity 5 is about to pop. That's going to give us an extra 10%, and that does apply to our core mining drills, so that is effectively just a buff to our infinite resource production rate. Fantastic. Let's check before uh, the research pops. Uh, 105 core fragments per second at the moment. We are still getting that bug where visually it says, rate calculator says we've got double the number of core mining drills here, but it does calculate correctly. Yay, indeed. I wish I could see exactly how far off uh, finishing the research we are, but it's very close. And we've got another 4.6k 
uh, space science up here. Might be good to place a few more undergrounds over here. If that was eight, I would be very happy. Uh, eight tiles, that is. But let's do this for aesthetics and to uh, save a few belt. doesn't look too bad. Maybe it could be a bit more symmetrical. This one's probably going to be exactly eight. Fantastic. And then... Uh, I'm a little concerned. Did I not pick up 50 Express Undergrounds when I went home? No, we've got plenty. Okay, cool. I have a question about Science Queue. If you check the Activate Research Queue after finishing the game in SE, will it be after researching light speed <laughs> for your ship? Or after first satellite rocket? I don't know. Um, I always make sure I check it so that the queue is allowed right from the start of the game myself. We're just a few modules short here. Um, are any of these completely built? No, we're missing some assembly machines. Oh, that means we're way short. Um, let's run back home. Check how many assembly machines we actually need for this. 200. It's more than I was expecting. And let's just bump that up to, say, 150. Oh, and there's our coal mining drill. So what were we at? 105 with the current drills? 113. That's actually pretty good. That's like a 5% increase. Wait, didn't it say 10%? Or it's additive, another 10% um, mining productivity on top of what we already had. Uh, so we had plus 40%, now we've got plus 50%, I think is how that worked. Yes. Yeah, so that makes sense. Uh, let's pick up... There are no more productivity modules to pick up right now. Don't think we need any more speeds at the moment. This is uh, kind of super overkill, but I would rather design and build, you know, the heat shield city block once. Oh. It would maybe look a little bit neater if we pulled that Express Underground Belt back a little bit, but I think this is easy to see what's going on. It also saves one piece of belt. Okay, so do we have a column that has all of the modules? I think the middle one does. We're looking at... Uh, this suggests that it would use 36 stone brick per second, but that's only if we're consuming all 190 
stone tablet per second. Since we're actually consuming 144, um, let's see, it's more like 27 stone brick per second. So it's a little bit more than half of a blue belt for each column. Five times that, well, let's see. 5 times 27 is 135. Uh, that is significantly more than 90. I'm a bit concerned now. Let's see. We need 144 stone tablet per second. If we have this times uh, 5, 6. That's slightly less. 27 stone brick per second. Let's call it 28 just to be safe. 28 times 5. 140. Considering that two blue belts is 90. 3 is 135. Uh, we need four blue belts. A stone brick. And we really don't have room for it. Unless there's some method that I haven't thought of yet, especially with what I've learned with circuitry, where we could actually get uh, two full blue belts of output in this space. I don't think that's right, though. I think the um, I think the belt itself is gonna be well. No, if this if we're bottlenecking on the belt, that's fine. That's a full blue belt. That's a full blue belt. Um, so theoretically, if we can make the balanced unloader aggressive and fast enough, um. That should be totally fine. We are going to have a little bit of a problem with space over here, it looks like. Um, that's not good. It enabled for me after launching a rocket. Okay. Is that just a resource sink, or do you actually need it for something? Uh, this one, whoops. Uh, this thing up here is a resource sink. This thing down here is for making um, heat shielding. Hmm. There, I'm pretty sure there isn't room to... Okay, worst case scenario, we can fit uh, this blue belt outputting down here, and this blue belt outputting down here, and belt spaghetti over here. That's going to be ugly, but it'll work. I would much prefer if we can do something a bit more symmetrical. Um, but we might not have room for that. If I move this constant combinator somewhere, then this could go here, this could go here. We put an underground. We're going to have to move some combinators around which is fine. Let's say this comes over here. I should probably not step on the tracks hearing all of these trains whiz by.
even if we can't get perfect throughput of uh, balanced unload saturated blue belt from these six uh, stack inserters, which I think we can with my current knowledge of doing these circuits, um, it's only a little bit more than three full blue belts that we actually need here, so I think we're going to be okay. Probably. We do have to spaghetti the... Oh, that's convenient. Uh, we do have to spaghetti this through here. And then... There's no more room. Uh, I suppose we could move the whole... Four to five balancer down one tile, which would mean moving all of these down one tile, which is not difficult. So we get those two belts out there, and do we even need to bring them together? I think we probably do, even though the throughput is smaller. Um, I think for the exact same reason that we have to merge all of this stuff, we would have to merge all of the uh, stone brick. One off? Yes. But it's not going to be that bad. I can just move this down a tile. Move this down a tile. And do the same thing on the other side. Not so bad. Okay. And there's two, there's just enough room to squeeze through this part as well. But then, if we do bring it all the way back here, just to merge it and balance it all, and then split it again, um, it might be a problem. Hmm. Well... We don't need that much stone brick, right? 180 per second. Except it's not actually going to be 180 per second. Uh, we needed slightly more than three belts. It might be safe just to trust the balanced unload. Well, we're going to find out. So this one is going to be flipped around. That's going to go there. Uh, kind of forgot about the middle, sort of. No, I didn't. Oh, the fact that we're doing... At this point, I'm getting very tempted to just get rid of one column here. It's going to simplify things a lot. Um, we're not going to need any of these four to five balances. Um, and I could just have like these two belts go to this one and this one. And these two belts go to this one and this one. I, I think I may do that. I try to use powers of two if possible. Yeah, me too. I'm gonna have a little think about it for like a minute, but I, I, I think I will just get rid of the uh, fifth column. No pun intended. Um, it's gonna really simplify and we're, and we're gonna need a lot less belt and uh, 
it's going to make throughput easier as well. We could also just have one belt for output for the entire thing instead of slightly more than one. And if we have any concerns about not using up all the space, we could just put more solar panels down. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. Alright, let's do it. Even after all that. It's really nice not having to think about the biters anymore. Although I'm still getting used to it. The next time we have to think about biters, it'll probably be... You know... What military stuff do we bring to a planet that is really scary? My max module tier is 9, but I decided... I already make my builds ready for tier 9 modules, even though they won't run perfectly now. I thought about that, and uh, bigger modules are just really far away, so I'm just going to design things for tier 3 for the foreseeable future. Okay, I think that's going to be enough. Uh, get ready to create a lot of butt jobs. And I'll just make sure we preserve the uh, the column in the middle. Oh, more research is finished. I can't remember what that was, but it was one of the one of the things that only needs like a hundred space science. I believe it was telescope. Cannot be built on land or spaceship. A sophisticated telescope sensitive to multiple wavelengths around the visible spectrum. Uh, it's actually relatively easy to make. We'll definitely make one of those when we go upstairs. Uh, I'm pretty sure we should have maybe some spectral mirrors sitting around. Yep, here we go because they are part of the production chain for uh, flat solar panels. All right, forgive me, bots. Gonna have to get them to pick up all of the buildings in the middle as well. We're not going to need the 4 to 5 balancer. I may yet leave these facing out to the side to start with. And maybe I'll leave this the way it is as well. In fact, we're probably... I'll have to do the math. We may still need the four blue belts of output. Well, sort of, somewhat, four blue belts of output, probably, um, for stone brick. We'll see. I should probably run the experiment in... Um, sandbox as well to see if I can now get full throughput uh, with my contemporary circuit design with a shape like this. For example, 5 prod modules in industrial furnaces with 12 speed modules, 8 efficiency modules in wide area beacon will fill one blue belt exactly if I use 4 furnaces. Wow. 
That's going to save some UPS as well. And a lot of space. I really do like the beacon uh, redesign in space exploration. What is happening here? Oh. I recognized it immediately this time. Speaking of which, um, we should have those buildings I placed over here earlier. So let's make personal roboport and limit it to, I don't know, 10. Should be plenty. Um, yeah, 10, sure, why not? Personal Roboport. And then we need batteries. Long arm inserter, go brew. And what would be, be missing? That's the wrong recipe. Uh, steel and regular battery. It actually needs twice as much steel. Okay. I like one machine, one beacon rule, but I'm too lazy to redesign my builds with every tier upgrade. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the only trouble. Of course, it doesn't, it, it, it's relatively quick in vanilla to get to the highest tier of beak, uh, uh, the highest tier of modules. But I definitely much prefer this uh, one beacon rule. It is still interesting um, sometimes figuring out how things are going to fit together to get the most out of the least number of beacons. Um, and also not having every single late game design, you know, look like something like this. Um, I think that's a big improvement. Do you have a blueprint book shared somewhere on the Discord? Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know that I have it linked on the Discord, but I'll throw it in there right now. Let me just adjust this real quick. Blueprints. And welcome. Faki. Cheers. No worries. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, get rid of all of this for now, and I do want to make sure this is in the middle. Uh, I believe the rail signals here are on the left side of the middle. I can double check that actually. So this is 49 and 49, fantastic. All right. So cut and uh, 
paste. Can't really see properly, I'll wait a little bit. Maybe I should use more batteries. Well, maybe we should research something better than portable RTG. That would require energy science pack 2. That's going to be a while. We don't even have energy science pack 1 yet. It's got a lot of exotic stuff in it. I think before the next stream I'll spend a while in sandbox designing some uh, space stuff as opposed to tacking on more spaghetti over here. I wonder how close we are to doing all of the uh, rocket science pack research. I think it's going to take a while still. Hey Zavoxifal, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, so that goes there. And this should be that much easier, not just to figure out how we're going to balance things, but to fit all of the inputs up there. Doing good, you? Yeah, quite well. Uh, very much enjoying my break. That does not go there. That's where that goes. Um, this doesn't need to be removed, uh, except this does. And then, actually, that side, please. Probably shouldn't have used bots for that part. My energy is still completely drained. And then... I didn't actually think of this part. Um, oh, right. We can just put this on the other side. I think. No, that's slightly wrong. Uh, so these two are going to look like this. Come to think of it, if the entire thing is going to be less than one blue belt... Well, no, we still need a... we still might need a splitter to merge it. Unless we were to put all of this on one side, and all of this on the other side. And then... I think that's going to be ugly anyway. Why don't we just do this properly to begin with? And then underground. Only need one belt here. What are my bots doing? Oh, didn't realize how full we were. That might be a problem. Okay, I don't think that's going to be a problem. Just have to wait for them to place a lot of this belt. It looks like there's more space on the left, but I think it's mostly just... It's probably one tile, um, but I think it's mostly just because there's all of this junk over here. Actually, this should be exactly the same. 15 versus 15. Perfect. Why don't we give the bots a hand?
Check. That doesn't go there. My bots keep going to sleep because the robopot power is too little. I suppose with four personal robopots versus four personal uh, portable RTGs, there's probably not much point in adding more roboports. Um, they can actually drain it to zero pretty quickly. It would only be for relatively small jobs that having more roboports could get it done quicker. Okay, uh, I kind of want the substations to be symmetrical. Can we do on the outside? As we wait for the bots to recharge. Oh, I can do this remotely. Oops. I need three hands for this. There we go. Oh, and we finished uh, some other research. What have we got? Astrometrics facility. It's got one of those old school physical displays representing planets. Combines, compares, and quantifies different sources of astronomic information. So it's a computer. I guess. Uh, that is missing a few tiles. thought that was a mistake for a second there, but no, that's completely correct. These two belts should not be connected. Oh, coronal mass ejection. ETA 4 hours 47 minutes. Okay. Uh, can we stop it? 2.28 gigawatt peak power, 182 gigajoules over 120 seconds. I think that is the normal amount. So we should have way more than enough to stop that by now. Um, I think our umbrella is way back here next to the original base, but it is on the same power network as most everything. Um, our steam turbines have mostly been napping during the day. That is a very good sign. Uh, how much are we producing? 3.32 gigawatts, 143 gigajoules of... Okay, we've got most of the... Uh, most of the store energy storage that we need for handling the coronal mass ejection is in the accumulators alone. On top of that, we've got all of this 500 degree steam. Um, lots and lots and lots of it. Uh, if we get this thing built in time, we'll have a bunch of extra steam storage as well. Well, actually, 
we're using that to regulate the fuel, so maybe not so much. But whatever the case, having more nuclear plants active definitely wouldn't hurt when the coronal mass ejection arrives. But I think we're going to have no trouble whatsoever uh, with this one. Still, a uh, good idea to make sure we've got all of our ducks in a row. Um, I still haven't addressed why we haven't been getting deliveries of um, nuclear fuel over here. It's a couple of times that I've manually brought nuclear fuel over to uh, this station. Even though it did get automatically delivered to start with, and we haven't changed anything. Uh, we've got negative 50. Where, where, wait, what was that sound? Okay, it wasn't biters or anything. That's the important part. Uh, what on earth is happening here? We actually... Okay, I don't... I think we're making vulcanite faster than we're turning it into vulcanite blocks. Yeah, we need another one of these, but a uh, bigger block. Maybe I should prioritize that because... I, We've got half of a... Oh, this one's blocked for a different reason. Nope, it's, uh... Wait, what's the problem here? I actually don't know. Oh, I think I see the problem. Where are you trying to go with that? Over here? I think I see the problem. This station is named wrong as well. Um, this is coal and stone. And I believe the problem is we didn't set a request threshold. We didn't set a request threshold. Request stack threshold 160, that is a full train. Um, this train over here, the default request threshold is 1k, so when there was slightly more than 1000 available, uh, it tried to deliver over here, and because we make a certain assumption um, with this precise loader that I can't see the exact number unfortunately oh yes I can if I click there 1027 um wait if I change this no it's not going to change this signal over here um the the assumption here is that the train is asking for a multiple of four um, otherwise we would have to add just one more set of inserters that only get the remainder after this, uh, the remainder of four, and set the stack size. Um, because we're not doing that, uh, we ended up with not quite enough stone in this train. And it didn't leave the station. That's fine. But Vulcanite, that is sort of uh, turning into a minor emergency. Um, as soon as we... Well, I might even take a break from building this thing. Uh, just to build a system to make some more Vulcanite blocks. Uh, 
Um, still got plenty of this. Oh, did we actually finish? No, we didn't. We need some more beacons. And... Yellow inserters. Can I just... Do that for now? I think we've probably got enough to finish building this in our inventory. Maybe we'll run out of belt when we add all of the input at the top. This is a very neat looking build. Just a little bit more. Okay. Uh, so that's still going to go there, I think. Or at the very least, that'll be a good guide so we know where sulfur and steel needs to go. Uh, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, yeah, I think that's just gonna connect directly. Actually, that's gonna go there. It's gonna go there. And so on. Oops. Feels weird clicking on a express belt and hearing that sound. Wait, what? Oh! I never knew that. You can have a piece of belt that's not connected to wire or anything. Talk to the logistic network. Just... I never even realized you could have belt talk to the logistic network. That's fantastic. That definitely offers some possibilities um, for the idea that I, that's been cooking in my head for a while of having soft limits on items and having production slow down but not stop when they get to a certain amount. I don't suppose... you can't, like, connect it to itself like that. Okay, cool. Ooh, yes indeed. Alright, that... I think this will look a bit cleaner. And then, I don't think an extra one there is particularly necessary. Actually, if we're going to do that, this should reach as far down here as possible. And then we can make this look more consistent, like so. Uh, not like that. There we go. One or two more. Yeah, that's... I definitely like that a little bit better. Okay then. Let's 
that goes there. Actually, that goes there. Um, steel goes here and here, and here and here. I'm pretty sure this one's going to be steel, right? So, after this one, two, three, four. Steel has to split into eight. But it's by far the most limited throughput item. So we don't have to worry about like splitting it immediately or anything. Uh, it's going to go here first. Could go there. That goes down here. And then is it okay if our steel looks like this or no? It should be. Because it's all merged here. Um, I'm not entirely convinced we actually need a lane balancer because the uh, balanced unloader acts as a lane balancer. I should test that sometime because there's a bunch of lane balancers that I've put in sort of out of habit without thinking about that. Um, well, there's definitely room later on if we need it. Um, that is not quite right. I think we're going to do this. And then... Is that the max distance? Yep. Doesn't look quite right. There we go. I feel like we can do a little bit better than this particular aesthetic. that max distance? Not quite. Uh, this is fine. So that is going to look like that. Goes there. Wait, what? Yeah, no, that's correct. Okay, so tentatively this sort of looks like this. Sulfur from the side, steel from the middle. I actually do kind of like the way this part looks. And then we'll add a bunch of undergrounds just to not have six million. Uh, well, this can definitely be moved a bit. And then I guess that's going to look like that. That's fine. 
Same thing on this side. Don't know if a copy paste flip is gonna do the job or not. I guess we can try. I think it's gonna be one tile off with all of this stuff. Because of the left right asymmetry. And it looks like all of that is one off as well. Alright, let's just do this part manually. Where is that going? Is that what we did on this side? I think so. That's obviously the same. Yeah. How readable is this? Could be better. Could be worse. Yeah, that works. Alright, so what about stone brick? Um, let's power this thing up. And... One more time, uh, how many stone bricks do we actually need? So we don't need um, 144 per second. This is going to make uh, this is going to make 576 stone tablet per second. Uh, we have 32 machines doing that. Wait, what was that number again? 500 and... 576 stone tablet per second. Slightly more than 24 machines. Call it 25. Oh, hang on. We need a bit more than 108. That's less than... Less than three blue belts, but it's considerably more than two. Nemesis, uh, Nemesis XKL, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So we do need to uh, split this to each side to get enough throughput. Um, I think this part's going to look a bit different, though, from what we had before. We can maybe make this look a bit more tidy. Actually, that looks... K kind of. We'll see. Uh, this is going to look like so. And split. Actually, that's one, two, one, two. Yeah, no, that'll be fine. Okay. So. That can go straight down here. And this one... Like so. Balanced unloader from the train station. Means it kind of already is all merged. It's merged at the train station. That kind of sounds like troll logic or something. Maybe it's wishful thinking. <laughs> we'll see. If we do have to merge all of this before splitting it again, um, I think we can manage. Even though it's going to be a pain. Uh, that normally looks like that, but it's going to be a bit different on this side. Is this in the way of the train stop that we're going to need? I 
No, it's not. Okay. All right. So we've got these two already have what they need. And I think we'll place this over here. Something like that. This belt goes down this way. And we're going to need a bit of a slightly wonky looking curve over there. I th don't think that's too bad. Oh, we do have some more underground belt here. Fantastic. So is that... is that it? Did we do it? We obviously need to configure our stations first. But other than that, these should definitely not be green chests in this instance. So the bottom two are going to be sulfur. Uh, each is probably fine. Sulfur positive 12 because it's an unloader. We want to be above the average when we unload. Uh, sulfur and sulfur. And then, same thing over here. And this as well. And this one. Alright. So, what does sulfur stack to? I believe it's 50. Uh, negative... 57,600 sulfur. We need a LTN train stop here. And... Oh, nope. Not ready. Stop, 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 stop. No, too late. Well, it's probably just bringing the sulfur that we definitely do want it to bring. So that's probably fine. Can I touch all of this with the substations? Yeah, that should be okay. Why don't we just do it like this? Might be a little bit neater. And I don't think I could put that substation there. We'll worry about the aesthetics after we get this working. Uh, this station needs to be steel, I believe. Let's double check it before we commit. Uh, yes, definitely. Sulfur and steel are the slowest things here, so they're going to share the outside belt. Um, so steel, we're going to ask for... a lot. And what is this? Request priorities, negative a million. We still had sulfur coming here because there are no other stations asking for sulfur. And here it comes. Should see the balanced loaders kicking in in a moment. Uh, balanced unloaders, that is. Yep. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, steel. Okay. 
and steel. And then steel, and may as well set this to steel. Copy that all the way down. This one is 16k for a train load. Um, I guess we'll use a white signal for the light color. Uh, sulfur is definitely not blue. 8k stack. Seems okay. Oh, we finished uh, Astronomic Science Pack. And it looks like it has two recipes. Both of which involve a lot of exotic stuff that I don't necessarily know how to make. Two times cargo rocket section. So it's a it's a new recipe for cargo rocket sections. Okay. That's fine, I guess. Uh, our research queue is actually finished. What should we get now? Uh, we could do some rocket reusability and stuff, but I'm not terribly concerned about that. If anything, the cargo rocket sections that we get back from a rocket are more of a problem than anything else because we have to bury them off somewhere else. Hypercooling. Here we go. Hypercooling 2 gives us hypercooling thermofluid to approximately 0 Kelvin. Nice. I think we needed that for some kind of uh, production chain. Let's get Vita... Vita Melan... Vita Melange processing out of the way. Uh, what else we got? Piercing rounds. Oh, insert a stack capacity. Should have done that sooner. In fact, let's do it after this one. Uh, the next stack size requires material science, so we'll put that off for a little while. And I would definitely like more character inventory slots, so let's get that done. Zero K, here we go. Yes, indeed. Um, did we set this up correctly yet? No. So we need... Let's just copy this to start with, and then we'll change the steel to stone brick. Maximum that can fit in the chests. And stone brick is kind of gray. Alright, so last one of these, stone brick, stone brick, and stone brick. And don't forget also, stone brick. And last but not least, we need to see how our substations are going to fit together. Can't really hit those three if I do it like this. Um, uh, undergrounds, of course. I think that's a good start. And then this one. Can we maybe do the same thing over here and make these ones line up? That might look pretty good. I don't think I won't move these undergrounds to make the substations nice and 
neat because I will. There we go. That's definitely looking... a bit tidier. Except I'm not sure... I can't abide by this. It has to look a lot more similar on each side. about that. That's much better. Alright, so then we just need a train stop. And it needs to have a name that makes sense. Um, sulfur and steel uh, drop off. And this one is going to be sulfur and stone brick. Fantastic. I don't know why we aren't seeing more deliveries, though. How much sulfur do we have here? 15,000. That is significantly more than a train load. Uh, and this is 57,000. That is, could not be more full. Update stone bricks top manipulators? Uh, oh, good point. I updated this one, I forgot to copy it everywhere. Thank you, Happiness Cookie. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, um... Did I not... Oh, I see. Turn this constant combinator back on. And now LTN will deliver. Okay, cool. So that is steel, that is stone brick, and that should be everything we need to actually see this thing produce. Uh, the drop-off station, I mean the pickup station, apart from a name, is probably completely finished. Uh, spider. I'm a little sad that I have to add a substation just for this, but what are you going to do? Why does it... Yeah, it's fine. Still looking pretty neat. Here comes our stone brick. Nice. And our steel is already on the way. Gonna do a fancy loop the loop. And we should be getting, well, the only trouble with these uh, dual drop-offs, if you're doing a dynamic priority system, whereby the fuller this gets, the lower the priority goes, um, it's not like I can have different priorities for uh, sulfur and steel, or sulfur and stone brick, if we're sharing a um, train stop. So we might not necessarily see this station get sulfur too quickly, but it's probably just because there's already a train coming here with steel and stone brick. Um, we should see a sulfur delivery on this side fairly soon. Hmm. 
more importantly, we are making heat shielding. And we missed one little piece of belt, making the entire thing useless. But it's fine. We figured it out. Oh, I like that little sort of mini Mexican wave almost. Cool. So we've already got 140 uh, heat shielding. Considering only a quarter of this thing is active at the moment. Actually, shouldn't it be half? Oh, I missed some inserters, that's why. This is why you test. Don't have any... Oh, I do. There we go. We should see all of these machines active soon. All of them on the left, that is. Oh, here comes our sulfur on the right. Fantastic. And more sulfur coming from the left, probably. Yep. Uh, stone brick is not yet saturating the belt, but I wouldn't expect it to immediately. Even though we are overproducing stone brick. Uh, stone tablet, rather. But yeah, it'll definitely saturate um, the belt. Just grab some chocolate on the way back. Delicious. That feeling when you make yourself comfortable, yet your phone for two-factor authentication is on the other side of the room. Yeah. I need my phone uh, every day at work to log in, so it it's hard to not know where it is. Don't forget snacks. Yes, indeed. Oh, and don't forget to... not have pieces of the final product stuck on the uh, one side of the belt forever. I don't see this machine active. Oh, sulfur is taking a while to saturate as well. I think that's all that is. Probably. Um... Okay, I don't think... What is going on here? I think maybe we do need to merge and then split all of that. I think it's costing us a bit of throughput that we're not doing that. Although, looking at this belt here... Well, this one's always saturated, and this one isn't, which is odd. I wonder what's going on with that. Hmm. We're probably going to bottleneck on sulfur until we have... Well, no. There's no reason why that should be backed up again already. Why is this one not producing sulfur? Because there's not that much petroleum. Okay. Why is there no coal here? The one which is saturated with sulfur isn't saturated with stone tablets. Uh, did we actually run out of stone brick already on that side? Wow. Oh, no. 
Okay, yeah, we definitely need to merge and split the stone bricks because because we're getting sulfur on this side and not this side at the moment. Well, okay, to be fair, we've almost run out of sulfur on the left side of the uh, of this whole thing. But we've got a bunch of stone brick over here. 19,000 um, that is not going to these machines yet because we've been consuming them on this side, but not this side. Uh, because of the way the trains have been. One thing I didn't consider when designing this is that maybe we would bottleneck on trains actually coming into these stations. Where are you going? Oh, you've finished. Okay. And you're picking up... Why are you picking up 8.3k steel? Oh, we've actually got steel in storage? 33,000. That's interesting. That's probably a good sign. We do have a lot of steel here, right? 78k. Yes, we do. Okay, then. Things are going well, it seems like. Is this is is this actually a problem though? Because we hardly had any sulfur left here. I don't know if it is a problem. I am curious to see how this um, balanced unloader actually works under pressure though. I think a lane balancer would actually be helpful here, except it's going to be quite space expensive. If we do a 4 to 4, okay, that's actually not as bad as I thought. We can definitely fit it somewhere. We can't fit it like that. We could, we could do it here. That's actually really easy. Okay. Oh, uh-oh. Um, uh, nope, 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 stop, stop, please stop. That's not good. Um, we need to drain the extra steel off of this side of the belt. Okay, the end of the balancer is going to go there. That goes like so. Cool. That should help a little bit. And then one over this side. I don't think that's going to fit there, but we can definitely just move this stuff over a bit. goes there, and that goes there. Easy peasy. Okay. Uh, steel I am by far the least concerned about. It does all merge at one place, and balanced loader should be enough, especially with how slow it is. Um, stone brick though, I wonder, I think that should actually be fine. I wonder also if adding a lane balancer to this is going to be all it takes to make sure this stays saturated. Despite having the, well, if we have balanced unloading, if we rely on the balanced unloader to do the lane balancing, it means that we're, we are going to unload everything and, and use it, but we're going to limit our throughput when it gets backed up on one side of the belt. 
So yeah, we do need a lane balancer, and that actually solves this problem. Now we're seeing full throughput. Fantastic. Uh, I am seeing... Okay, I think it's just taking some time to finish saturating uh, on this side. 115 sulfur per second. That is considerably less than 180. So we can definitely saturate this belt with that. It's just taking a little while to catch up. And now we're waiting on stone brick. Um... Twenty-eight thousand, except it's balanced unload. I mean, there's a stone brick train. Oh, that's sulfur. There's going to be a stone brick train coming to this station in no time at all. I think I will actually change the train limits here to two. Um, things could get a little bit messy here, but. I'm hoping that we'll have LTN scheduling like a sulfur train and a stone brick train coming at the same, uh, same time. I also just wanted to double check. don't know if the long arms can handle... It, it's kind of hard to see a good spot to check this. Okay, this one. Are the blue inserters just too slow, or is there not enough stuff here? Let's check. I think the blue inserters might be too slow. No? They are just fast enough. There's no sulfur now. Okay. We don't have to change any of that. How difficult is it going to be to merge and split again? Actually, probably not that difficult. If we go over here... Merging and splitting our stone brick again, that is. This is going to go over here. Uh oh. I guess I don't have to worry too much about balancing that because we've got a balancer down here now. Okay, that's going to change, and that's going to change. Uh, stone brick comes out here as well. Uh, kind of an awkward way that it's approaching, but... Uh, this is... This, this could get ugly. That's not as bad as I feared. I think. So... That goes there, and then that's no good. This would go here, and 
maybe it would be easiest to... Oh, that's perfect. Oh, that's fantastic. Yes, please. Bring that over there. No, I just ran out of undergrounds. Did I? Wait, what? Yeah, we need literally two more to finish this build. Okay. Just enough room, pretty much. There's probably a few ways to squeeze a couple more blocks. All right, so we are merging and lane balancing. Uh, well, we're merging everything, but we're merging and lane balancing stone brick and uh, sulfur. We could still, I'm pretty sure, yeah, we could pretty easily fit a lane balancer, even a long one, I think, for steel. But I don't think it's particularly necessary. The throughput is... Uh, the re throughput required for steel for this entire thing is 57 per second, actually. Uh, that is considerably less than 90, though which is what these two blue belts can support. On the other hand, if it does drop to like 50%, which is what I was thought I figured out, um, that's not, that's going to be no good. So lane balancer goes here and that is everything both merged and lane balanced. All right, cool. And at least for a moment, it looks like everything's going full speed. Although I don't understand why I keep catching it, failing to get stone brick to the end. Probably because I just reconnected it all and it's still trying to get to the point of saturation. Because the machines take more stone tablet than they actually need, um, it takes a little while until you get to the end of the belt. Wait, don't tell me we're bottlenecking on... Oh, we are. Okay, uh, I hope this isn't going to be too difficult. Which side is that? Is this going to go on that side of the belt? Is this all we have to do? Or is it going to be weird on the other side or something? Yes, you are. Yes, indeed. Skashman, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, so it turns out... Um, it turns out we were bottlenecking on only having a stack inserter outputting for each uh, Assembly 3 machine making stone tablets. Uh, but if we're very lucky, the layout that we already have, all we have to do is add like so. There's just enough room as well. All right, cool. Now we're seeing uh, stone tablets get to the end of the belt. 
And it looks like we're seeing the machine at the very end uh, going at full speed all the time. Blue inserter didn't quite keep up there. And now the sulfur has run out, I think. Yep. But yeah, that should be all of the heat shielding production that we're ever going to need, question mark, at least for a very long time. Uh, we've already made 12,000. And once we get to the point where, like, we've got all the stone brick filled up over here, the stone brick is going to get used up significantly slower than sulfur. Um, it's not actually going to be this much stone brick. Yeah, stone brick is going to get used up like half the rate of sulfur, and it stacks to twice the size. So effectively, it's going to get used up a quarter as quickly, which means there's going to be more room for trains to bring the sulfur in itself. Um, so there's going to be a sort of less, less of a traffic jam situation. Uh, steel is going to be even better than that for the exact same reason compared to sulfur. Uh, it's in the same boat as stone brick, but it's much slower. All right, cool. I can't remember... Oh yeah, that's right. I almost said I can't remember what we were going to make next, but it's definitely vulcanite. We've now got multiple outputs that are blocked by vulcanite. Um, I'm not entirely sure what a big block for processing vulcanite is going to look like. I suspect that we're easily going to have enough throughput uh, for the whole game with just like half of this space, because this has been more than enough for quite a while. We could actually calculate, let's assume that we're going to need uh, all of these pulverizers going at full speed. It's going to be quite a while before we can support that, but let's just ratio it for that. 14.256 times 2, 28 and a half vulcanite per second. Let's call it 30. So we're going to need... Uh, first of all, we're going to need some pulverizers. I'd better go back to base and... Oh, we're finished. We're finished uh, wasting resources. So that's nice. Or is it because we've got no heat shielding? Yeah, I think it's because we have no heat shielding. I think we're running into the same problem here because I forgot to... I did not forget to set the request stack threshold for this station. Did I forget to set the provide threshold over here? I did not. So why on earth is this train asking for 164 heat shield? Maybe it was... No, this is the only drop-off for heat shielding. Hmm. Not sure about that one. No path to RTB. Oh. That's true. Uh, let's go back to base first and sort out our inventory a little bit. And then, and then, and then, and then. Then we're going to need to take some signals over to here, so the trains understand what they can and can't do. 
Oh, I should also add some uh, landfill over here and make sure that we can actually finish that intersection. I think there would normally be a signal here, so let's landfill this bit as well. My inventory is still very full. Oh, that would help. Yeah, that would probably help. Always check your personal logistics checkbox. So I think I would like to get rid of uh, the heat shielding side of the station already. And that can just be uh, LDS pickup. In which case we no longer need the circuitry unless we want to use the other half of the other side of this for um, a different pickup. But currently I don't think LDS is going... Oh, that's right. It's going to this thing, isn't it? Yep, there it is. Why... Why is there a train that is not emptying over here? Fifty-seven thousand six hundred explosives stacks to fifty. We have twenty-four steel chests. Twenty-four times fifty times forty-eight is fifty-seven thousand six hundred. That was scary. I thought it was going to hit me. Uh, fifty-seven thousand six hundred. 57,600. The request stack threshold is 160. Uh, we haven't had... The... The setting that I changed the timeout to was like 10 hours or something. So LTN didn't send an extra explosives train for that reason. I am just completely at a loss. Oh, I think I see the problem, actually. Yep. 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 We didn't do a lane balancer. That's the problem. Well, so there's a lot less, uh, actually, no, that should only, oh, this part's definitely wrong. Explosives, 12. Actually, for an unloader, yes, we do want that. Explosives. Oh, I set the balanced unloader wrong as well. Well, there's your problem. Uh, let's rebalance this, shall we? At least it's all starting to come together and make sense. Fantastic. Balancer is not connected. Yeah, this thing... Wait, this? Oh, right. I don't... I'm actually skeptical that we actually need this now. Um, because the problem was actually that... The balanced unloader was not configured correctly. It effectively didn't exist. 
Or... No, I could be wrong about that. I think it was configured correctly, except it had the wrong control signal for the stack size, but if who cares about the stack size, actually, we're just using um, uh, yellow inserters here. Um, unless this was set to copper or something. I don't remember. I thought it was everything greater than or equal to zero and the control signal was wrong, but I could be wrong about that. But I did see all of these little lights change. Um, I did see all of these little lights change after I changed the settings. So whatever they were before, I'm pretty sure it was imbalanced because of that. Uh, if explosives were getting consumed a bit quicker, it would be easier to see... Okay, yeah, this is going to sort itself out. So we're going to keep going until we've only got a half belt here, and then as soon as this part finally moves, there it goes. Fantastic. All right. What about this guy? Is it going to be a similar issue? Oh, well, that one's pretty straightforward. Wait, why did a stone train come here? Uh, remember when these two stations had the same name? I think it was probably... It somehow got to... It probably had its temporary train stop removed uh, before it got to its proper destination. And then it went to the nearest station with that name. I think that was probably the problem. What? Where are you going? Oh no. No, stop, 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 stop. There we go. Oh, indeed. Wait, what are you doing? Oh, are you empty now? Oh, you are empty. Oh, that was quick. Round and round and round she goes. And now you are going to depot. Perfect. Alright, uh, what was that other problem that I almost forgot to deal with? Oh yeah, we need a pulverizers. No, but first this thing on the left. Because there's a few trains waiting indefinitely over here. Probably just for a few signals. I'm just going to wait till the uh, landfill has been placed. Is that going to... Yep. Well, let's just try it now. That looks almost good. The train couldn't actually go that way, but there's nothing there yet. That should be fine. And then... You're able to leave? Unless? Wait, why are you insisting on going that way? 
Couldn't you... You could not. This train should not have been in here, but the signal... There it is. That signal wasn't placed yet. Let's just... Whoa! That's... Okay, this train is actually facing east, believe it or not. Ah! Go, 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 go! Okay. Alright. Minor heart attack. It's fine. Don't you run away from me before I repair you. And I don't think we need this bit of rail down here. Cool. I forgot we had this copper mine as well. Um, I think that is much, much faster than our iron mines, which is probably a pretty big factor in why we have way more copper than iron everywhere. I, I literally just forgot this mine existed. Oh, we're actually mostly kind of, sort of, finished building this. Um, how much stuff do we have? Looks like we're just waiting on steam turbines, pretty much. Do we have some heat shielding? Uh, heat pipe? Yes. I would have thought landfill would be more finished over here. Let's go. Let's go get some landfill, and we'll rush finish th uh, finishing that um, nuclear plant. I don't think it's needed, but I would like to have it, uh, have it finished before the coronal mass ejection. Hypercooling thermofluid to negative 273C. Super cooled. Nice. Uh, landfill, please. Hopefully that'll be enough. Actually, I don't think it will be enough. Oh, that's not in the... That doesn't have power yet. It is in range for the Roboport, but in any case, this is going to have to reach back this way. So now this Roboport's going to get power. And we're probably going to see some activity from these bots over here. Yep, there they go. The water? Uh, what about the water? Oh, it's green? Yeah, it's it's nasty polluted. It's even more nasty polluted over the left, I think. Why is it so polluted? Uh, that... That's just what happens when you play Factorio. Unless you get a mod that lets you clean the air, which, uh... Honestly, I wouldn't mind if that was in vanilla. Although... You know, pollution is what triggers the biters to attack. It's part of the uh, normal difficulty of the game. So, I guess I kind of understand them not including like air scrubbers or planting trees or something as part of the vanilla game. 
but definitely something worth considering to mod in. Is this on Nalvis or another planet? Blackwater. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, this is on Nalvis. We're sort of reaching... I don't want to use the word endgame, but in terms of what we do on Nalvis with um, little to nothing on other surfaces, uh, we're kind of reaching the end of that. We can call it surprise water. It's water, but with added benefits. It's water with added something, but I don't think it's benefits. Yeah, I don't think, like, lead is an added benefit, for example. Full of goodness? Oh no. Why don't we do a little bit of fishing while we're here? I think one of the... oh, there we go. This is actually closer to enough landfill to finish the job than I thought it would be. I could speed things up a bit by placing it myself, but I really don't want to make a mistake and, like, ruin the blueprint. Um, one little piece of landfill out of place in the part where the um, offshore pumps are placed would be a disaster. Alright, I think we did indeed not bring enough landfill. Contains 90% of your daily iron. Is that in one sip? I just want to get all the landfill placed so that we can at least... Uh, get the landfill placed, make sure the... Um, robo ports have power and touch and everything so that we can just place the blueprint and fire and forget and make sure that this uh, uh, nuclear plant is going to get finished oh, research done I wonder what it was uh, tool belt is on the way though after that, we'll definitely want energy catalog and energy science pack and growth facility. There is biological specimens under a range of controlled conditions that are impossible elsewhere. In addition to standard climate controls, everything from micro... Micro microgravity? Is that just a typo? Uh, microgravity vats to high G centrifuges are available. Microgravity fish growth. It produces fish and also contaminated bio sludge and contaminated cosmic water. It'll, we can also produce wood. Okay. So wood is no longer a resource that we ever have to worry about. Um, not that I was particularly worried. Biomass? Oh, you can... There's another recipe for life support. From an empty life support canister. We can make crude oil out of bio sludge and methane. Uh, we can make the growth facility. And 
we can turn biomass into biosludge and nutrient gel into neural gel in the same at the same time okay well whatever the case let's uh keep it going goop growing time soon yes indeed I might just pick up some of these items as well to speed things up. Whoa! Oh, those are condenser turbines. Okay. Uh, never mind, we do have a lot of steam turbines as well. Can we actually fit 500 in here? We cannot. Um, we can fit 480. Why don't we make it 460 and leave room for some uh, nuclear reactors. I think they stack to 10. So there's no shortage of these items over here. We're maybe not requesting enough of them at a time. Oh, speaking of which, the delivery is just arriving. Uh, how much landfill is here? Only a hundred. Yeah, I need to tweak some of these numbers. I didn't want to go overboard with the requests and have just a ton of stuff sitting here that's no longer needed, but... The automate, automatic build process of these things is a bit too slow. Alright, why don't we rescue some steam turbines. Uh, heat shield. I keep saying heat shield when I mean heat pipe. No, just looking at it. Oh, yeah. As opposed to a, taking a sip. 90% of your iron intake just by looking at the water. I forgot to bring the extra landfill. Uh, rip. Why don't we place... Why don't we put this down now? We won't be able to place all of the ghosts, but... Uh, it'll give the bots something to do while they wait for the landfill. That's odd. Oh, because all of that wasn't placed yet. Okay. So that will waste fuel. Hmm. Can we start with this tank right here? Why are you like this? Steam has to be less than 2.5. Oh, of course it is. Oh, no, wait, that'll be fine. Yeah, I forgot. I tested that earlier. Well, it might be fine. We need to make sure we get pipe and stuff here. Uh, in record time now, actually. Okay, are we just about done? I'll drop off all the rest of the stuff over here. Oops, not solar panels. Um, let's go get some pipe and landfill. It looks really fast, actually. Motion sickness warning, I guess. Too late. 
All right, so we need a bunch of pipe and landfill. This is probably more than enough. Are we not? Oh, there we go. Is the... Yep, the pipe is heating up. Just have to make sure this steam engine in uh, this uh, storage tank in particular gets some steam and we'll stop wasting fuel. Oh, we've run out of power. Nice and quick. Are we actually done placing landfill? Can it be? Nope, there's a little bit over here. Alright, how about now? I'm still not seeing any steam here. What's going on? Oh, low temperature still. Okay, I think with that one nuclear reactor heating up all of this heat pipe, it's going to take a while to get warm. Um, I should come back with a whole bunch of steam turbines. Uh, heat exchanges. I actually thought I... Wait, is all of this in the same robo-network? It is. Yeah, so that should... We've got 79 heat exchanges over here. How many construction bots do we have? 60. Why are... Why are 60 of them taking a break right now? We've got... 79 heat exchanges in this chest. Uh, 60 construction bots idle. Oh, is that the last of the heat exchanges just happened? Okay, what about heat pipe? Uh, no heat pipe. Okay, fair enough. So I guess everything is working. Um, however... I also just realized I could make the trash station get rid of excess items, even the ones we want, if I just set these uh, set these values to just the right amount. Okay, how much are we actually requesting of this stuff? Only 50 heat pipe at a time, 10 heat exchanges? Not sure why. Um... Why don't we just increase these numbers? Striking for better working conditions? Yes. Good on them. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know why these numbers are so low. Let's, uh, well, 10 inserters is actually fine. Well, how many do we, eight? Yeah, eight for an entire reactor, so that's not a problem. How many substations do we use in one go? Well, let's check the blueprints. 14, 22 for this one. 
Let's just make it a stack. And... I don't think we're using the filter on this filter inserter. So why don't we just make it a stack inserter? And away we go. Wait, we still haven't finished this nuclear reactor. Oh no. Well, I think it's going to get done quite a bit quicker this time. We don't still have trains stuck over here, right? Do we have small trains ready? Yes, good. Only one cargo, actually. Okay, two cargo. And what are you doing? Why can't I click on you? There you go. You're going to the wall. I still haven't figured out why we were having trouble delivering nuclear fuel to these places. Well, we've got nuclear fuel here in any case. Hmm. Oh, hang on. Oh, wait, no, never mind. Uh, that could be an issue. No, it's totally fine. So we're reading robot statistics, but we're also reading the contents of the passive provider chest. Um... That's as a positive, and then we compare it to the negatives for what we're requesting. Yeah, that's not going to cause any problems. This one is reading logistic network contents. Oh yeah, this is for the trash. So... I'm not seeing why LTN isn't creating a delivery for this right now. On the green wire, we've got... We're asking for 500... Uh, uh, 500 turbines at the moment. It could be the pickup station has issues. Oh. The pickup station is a little bit busy. Wow, that's um, more than a little bit busy, actually. I was thinking about redesigning this thing yet again. Maybe just, um, just have arbitrary requester chests instead of setting them dynamically. It would make the system a lot more responsive when it comes to loading the trains. It would be really nice as well if we had some uh, some way to read uh, basically what is being asked for by LTN. I'm guessing the... I think there's a mod called LTN Combinators or something. I'm guessing you can probably do that. But yeah, as it is, the lag time in the bots actually bringing items that are being asked for by this train. Um, it's causing a long delay in some of these deliveries, which in turn is making this... This is the only stop that's supplying, for example, our nuclear plants. Um, I think I probably just should have had that as a separate uh, station. 
This thing isn't even half loaded yet. Currently this thing is requesting ammo and roboports, and it's still got like three other types of items that are being delivered. Mm -hmm. Alright, well... That's enough to convince me to go and pick up some of this stuff manually. Steam turbines, nuclear reactors, and a, th a heat pipe, uh, heat pipe, definitely. I think that's basically it. Okay. Hi. It's only 50 or so, but I think that's actually enough. Uh, I'm just going to take all of this, and we'll bring back what we don't need. I've had enough of these plants not being finished. Nice. I think that's it. I definitely like the look of this layout of electric poles more. So currently we are putting fuel in. Uh, we got our water. We don't have enough heat yet. As soon as this reaches 2.5k steam, uh, we're going to stop putting fuel in. There's a big lag time in how long it takes to burn through the fuel, so a lot more heat will still be generated. Um, but I'm pretty sure even in the worst case scenario, based on my testing, uh, even in the worst case scenario where this thing is completely isolated from the main power network, um, Burning all of the rest of the fuel after you reach that 2.5k in this one storage tank uh, of steam. The steam storage in the tanks plus the storage that is built into the heat pipes, um, you're not actually going to waste any energy at all. And now we've got some more power to play with. Uh, what are those dips? Delivery cannon. Huh. Interesting. Okay, so I think at this point we've got way more than enough power. Um, we're not going to have any trouble... The other advantage of this is without arbitrary blueprint stuff, you don't get the weird, um, the weird pattern with the, uh, wires. But yeah, I like this one much better. It's a little bit taller, but that's, well, no, it just is a little bit taller. It's not just if you don't count the offshore pump sticking out. Um, we had to add one, two, three, four, five tiles of uh, north-south for each side. Well, four times, actually. So it's not too surprising that the space saved on the moved offshore pumps uh, doesn't quite make up for that. Still, we also get a bunch of accumulators, way, way, way more energy storage, uh, fuel control, and and it looks neat. Oh yeah, and the solar panels um, 
just to make sure that there's always some power for the inserters and stuff, and the roboports. Okay, let's bring this stuff back. And what now? I actually don't know. We wanted to build a, a Vulcanite system, a nice big one. There was something else as well, but that is a pretty high priority, and I can't remember what the other thing was. We need uh, uh, pulverizers, which I do not normally carry. I don't think we're going to need this many. Uh, for Vulcanite, 10 is probably going to be super overkill, especially with beacons. So, let's first have a look at what we actually need to do. I think it is the crushed Vulcanite recipe. And then we get crushed Vulcanite. From crushed Vulcanite, we need to get washed Vulcanite, which produces steam, which we need to be able to get rid of. Uh, and as far as I know, the only way to get rid of steam is to expend it as power, which is why this is on its own little electricity network. Um, there is a recipe under electric boilers to delete water, but I'm pretty sure there isn't one to delete steam. You can turn steam into water. Interesting. Vulcanite system for smelting? Yeah, and not just that, but we have to get rid of the Vulcanite that we do have. Um, it's been blocking... Yeah, both sides of this one, you can see it. It's completely blocking uh, every other resource here. We've actually got... Well, I guess that shouldn't be too surprising, because you don't get too much uranium, but we've got 49,000... Um, Vulcanite here, and we're getting close to enough uranium ore for a pickup, but we're not producing any uh, at this point. Same thing over here. Oh, we're so close. So close to more free uranium in the train network. Okay, so it was chemical plants, wasn't it? I forgot to pick some up. Let's go get some. There are steam condensers that don't produce as much power, but the steam used turns back into water. Yeah, I've got that one. It's, uh, I've actually got a chest full of them. Um, that could be very useful in space, to say the least. There's also flares that will burn up any liquids, though that may be a K2 thing. Yeah, I think that's a K2 thing. All right, so we need chemical plants and maybe some steam engines, probably some steam engines, and then just some assemblers. Um, let's get some chemical plants. Make it 50. Turn this on. Get some steam engines as well. Uh, probably, probably won't need anywhere near as many steam engines as a one-to-one -one ratio. In fact, probably just one or two will be enough, but I would rather take more than I need. Um, so that's still getting delivered. Okay. Almost there. I should have put a radar over here as well. Um, do we have that in the provider? No. 
Well, I'm just going to place one uh, so that next time I go there it's going to get placed. All right. Are we good? Let's go. So the design that we have uh, to the north is a little bit like this. Actually, I could probably make a decent start just by copy pasting. It's really not that complicated though. Water in, steam out here, that goes there. And we need to fit in some beacons as well. Um, we could probably, I think probably turning the washed vulcanite into vulcanite blocks is a good idea in this same area. I don't think, I don't think washed vulcanite is going to be used for anything else, is it? It is not. Literally nothing. Okay, cool. So, what is our rate and ratio and layout going to look like? Maybe if we put the assembly machines right here. I hope this is going to be a good ratio. That would look pretty good. I do want to use productivity modules. Um, want to get the most out of our vulcanite because ultimately it does turn into more iron and, and copper not to mention we need it for some other things uh, the flashing is driving me just a little bit crazy let's uh, make that stop okay also all of this visual noise over here, as pretty as it looks, is not helping uh, just at the moment. I don't know if this is a vanilla thing, but um, much to my surprise, it turns out you can use stone as uh, uh, to make a road. I don't know how long that's been possible for. It's obviously not as good as, like, stone brick road. Walking speed, 120%. Yeah. Whatever the case. There's not enough to lay it all down here to make the ground a bit more clear. I think we'll do it something like this. Yep, looks kind of cool, I guess. Uh, what's our rate so far? 9.9 .9 steam per second, that's actually more than I thought. 14.4 uh, vulcanite per second. Crushed vulcanite, we are producing slightly faster than we're making it. If we want a better ratio than this, we'll have to, you know, have a huge row of these things, and I don't necessarily like that. I particularly like the way the beacon touches everything here. Um, washed vulcanite, though, we actually need twice as many of these machines. Can we do it? Um, that's obviously not going to get touched by the beacon. Okay, that's looking a bit better, but I don't think we can... Maybe if we have the pipes in the middle, uh, on, the, on the sides kind of thing. So tentatively, let's say we do this. Um, I guess that works as well. Yeah, that that's actually fine, except that the steam... We couldn't, like, have a row of these. 
that's slightly too far for underground pipe. Uh, we couldn't have like a row of these and... Maybe we could connect all the steam up together. No, that's not going to work. What if we rotate this, uh, something like this? I'm not sure how this part could work. There's no output from this, so it shouldn't complain. Uh, if this pipe goes over here... If, if they're doing an alternating pattern, and then up here it goes like that, maybe? I don't think that's going to work. No, they're just going to be on separate pipe networks. Uh, what if... Pipe goes up here, and then don't think we have to worry about the pattern from one to the next if we do it this way. Uh, steam pipe comes down here. That should be fine. These two will connect, but I think that's okay. We could also, well, if we do them this close together, we wouldn't be able to connect them together like that, but I don't really think there's a reason to. So this just requires Vulcanite. That's going to be pretty easy. I like how that pipe just barely reaches over the belt as well. Substation can obviously come up here just a bit further. Either one of these is fine. I feel like that looks slightly better. And then... Well, what's our rate for this again? Just four of these will give us 11.88 Vulcanite blocks per second already. Uh, we do make slightly more Vulcanite, uh, crushed Vulcanite than we use. We make slightly more washed Vulcanite than we use. I think this is a good enough ratio, especially considering the way this tiles. Uh, we're going to need 16 water per second, and we're going to need to delete 9.92 steam per second. Which should not be difficult. Uh, one of these uses only 30 steam per second. Um, but that is... That's enough for three of these things, right? Yeah. So I think we'll have the, um, I, I think we'll have the steam go off somewhere else to get used up, because we can't exactly, well, on the other hand, oh, hello, can we fit a couple of these in here? I think we can. We don't need to fit two of them in here, but I like the symmetry. You can use the nuclear turbine for the steam. You can, but you won't... Uh, if the steam isn't that hot, you won't gain anything out of using the nuclear turbine. Um, I'm pretty sure. Turbine. 
It will consume 60 per second as opposed to 30 per second, though. However, we've already got more steam engines than we need. Like, the, one of these steam engines is actually enough to support three of these pulverizers. Um, I just like the way this fits together. It's very neat. So that goes there. And that goes there. And that goes like so. Uh, this is one, two, three. Let's use some uh, space pipe for this. So it's going to be three, five, seven, nine, fifteen. I bet this is a. Is it an even number or an odd number? It's an even number. Never mind. I feel like if we're only using the space, the, the long pipe for this part, it's not going to look that much better. Is this better or is this better? This can store a tiny bit more water. And it's going to make it that much more difficult to the water to slush around to where it needs to get to. Uh, this is only going to use 32 water per second though, so this is going to be... Water's not going to be a problem. Um, we will need a power switch just to prioritize consuming the steam. Can I link you a fun Factorio related video? Sure. Uh, also, Imel, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. There's also flares. Oh yeah, I've read that already. Okay, so this is looking pretty good actually. Um, how many times? I, I kind of want this to be facing the way it is. I feel like that's just going to look better. How many of these are we going to need to to use all of the Vulcanite? This is using 28 already. I think we were actually really close to already using all of the Vulcanite. Um, if we multiply this by 2... Yeah. I, I feel like it's kind of a waste to use one of these uh, city blocks for this. This is going to be a really small build. In fact, I could just go ahead and put it over here. Um, except that we would also need some water. We could use this spot right here. That'd be okay. Um, I do feel like going super overkill and, like, doubling this so it's going to be way more than enough for a long time. If we build this, and we've already got this thing, um, we're going to have, like, 40% more than we need. Um, and that's assuming we get all of these pulverizers active, which we don't. Permit? Sorry. What be this? Hey guys, I want to show you... Oops. Uh, let me just... Press this button right here. What is all of that text? Oh god. Oh no. I thought I knew what horror was. That's... 
That's traumatizing. Thanks, I am suck. It's not like this video. <laughs> yeah. Well, it definitely, uh, I think it had its intended effect. Okay, so we need a station somewhere like this. I don't really care if it's like super symmetrical or anything this time. Noisy. Oops, that's wrong. Train is allowed to stop over here. One, two, three, four. We're also going to need a drop off. Um, actually, maybe I should do the uh, dead center train stops because that way the trains will typically only use the side that they come in. So this goes here, and this goes here. Let's just double check that one. That looks right. And chests. And then a couple of these. I don't think we should need the land. For, uh, let's just do it like this. I think. We're not going to go through Vulcanite that quickly, right? I mean, ultimately, we're not even, uh, okay, let, let's shape it for the maximum here. We're less than a red belt if we have all of these pulverizers active, so I'm really not worried about that. So why don't we just, can I move this down one more tile? Not really. Not even if I... No. I could do the drop-off on the other side there. But I think this is fine. Let's just do it like this. Uh, water is going to come from here, I think. I don't think I have any offshore pumps on hand. I can craft them, though. Since I changed my requests. Uh, Fenrir 101, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And then I was going to connect up power, but we need it to be on its own power network so that we use up the steam as a priority. Uh, obviously, this is going to be a balanced unloader. Um, actually, let's connect power just so that we can check rate calculator with the beacons. Uh, 23 Vulcanite blocks per second. So it really doesn't matter if we're only using one side of the belt. But I'm gonna use both sides anyway. Uh, where is it? There it is. And then...
Work meetings are over for today. Nice. Is that not your favorite part of the day, Veldak? Okay. Actually, I feel like that would look a little bit better through the middle of this part. Didn't connect the steam from left and right. Didn't connect the steam. Oh, good point. Yeah, I think... Um, we could... Since we're not going to tile this to either side, we could just do it like this. That's pretty good. Uh, Schnunzi? Uh, did I pronounce that right? Schnunzgi. Good catch, thank you. Alright, so that should be sufficient. And then... We've got water. I think that's it. We just have to make the stations. And I'm going to need a lot more um, inserters for that. Actually, I'm pretty sure yellow inserters are going to be more than enough. At least for this part. Um, also for this part, actually. We'll put the... Uh, combinator for the balance loader on the side away from the LTN stop. I'm just a little bit sad that doesn't line up. Maybe I'll just do it like this. We're going to need some power over here anyway. Okay. Grab some wire. And uh, everything greater than or equal to zero because it is a unloader. Zero is going to be our average. Not going to worry about stack size this time. And then copy all this. There we go. Each divided by negative 24. Each. Something a little bit similar over here. Except... Oh wait, that insert is... Uh, that combinator is dead wrong. There we go. These ones are going to need to be turned around. And they are going to be less than or equal to average. That should be fine. I think we're going to need three uh, substations over here. Unfortunate. Why don't we make it a bit more symmetrical or something? That's not too bad. Okay. Uh, stack inserters, of course. Twenty-three vulcanite block, twenty-four vulcanite block per second, and twenty-eight vulcanite incoming per second. Even with a stack size of two, that's really easy for yellow inserters. Oh, filter inserter for this. Never use regular stack inserters for this part. 
uh, vulcanite, and away we go. Pickup stations are easier. Let's set the train size first. And provide stack threshold 160. That's all it takes. Uh, requesters are a bit more complicated. I think we'll skip the fancy display for this one. And we're just going to say... Uh, train size, one train, uh, request stack threshold 160, put that over here, and I think Vulcanite stacks to 50, doesn't it? Yeah, 50. So it's negative 57,600. Actually, if that other one is set to have a priority system, it's always going to be a higher priority. But it's already pretty much full, so I don't think we have to worry about that. Oh, here comes the train already. And now we'll just make sure we didn't miss something. Where is the train? Here it comes. Wait, where is it going? Oh, it's getting vulcanite, of course. For some reason I thought it would come here empty for a second. And now we can start getting other resources out of our pulverizers again. Fantastic. And there's the 8,000. And down it comes. I quite like the way the storage areas look on the map. Easy to identify. Uh, something is wrong with our balanced unloader. Everything has to be greater than or equal to zero, which is average, because we're reading the local chest as a positive number on the red wire. Net each divided by negative 24... Output each gives us the... I see the problem. Uh, look at the input signals. Um, I wonder why this isn't a more familiar problem. Hey, the scientist. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Thank you very much for the Prime sub. Two months. Alrighty. Uh, how's it going? Pretty well, actually. I'm on my first day of five days off from work right now. Uh, if I... Uh, if I just set this to do Vulcanite, it's not going... Oh. Well, that works for the moment, anyway. If I set that to just... Um just ignored the other signals and do Vulcanite, it's not going to account for this giant negative right here. Uh, yeah, going pretty well, thanks. Uh, scientist, how are you? We're getting things pretty much completely under control with uh, Nalvis, so the, there aren't going to be many more distractions down here, I think. 
we can start really focusing on space next time. I could just put a combinator here that's going to be like a one-way signal for um, for the positive value of vulcanite here. Alternatively, this is probably what I've always been doing and why I haven't run into this problem. That's a much better way to do it. So now we're outputting negative 647. So the average is 647. Yes, good. Okay, perfect. What's the problem? Crushed vulcanite, check. Uh, stone. I forgot about stone coming out of this. Oh, no. Um, how... I think I see a solution. Lucky this time. We can just get rid of it that way. Uh, we do need a... Well, this one doesn't have to be a filter inserter because it's only going to insert washed vulcanite. Um, but this one is definitely going to have to be a filter inserter. Filter is stone. And we could do a dual... Actually, I think I, I, I would like to do that. pick up this, uh, how you say, vulcanite block. They're going to share a belt. And we're going to use filter inserters to keep it balanced. Uh, each divided by negative 24 output each. And we are going to set filters blacklist. And I don't think we need the enable disable condition uh, in combination with that. Oh, we can't use them both at the same time. All right. So if we have an above average amount, that'll be a positive number, that, a, a positive total of whichever resource that gets to the filter inserter from the negative average from here and the positive amount of what's in the chest. Which means we're going to get a balanced load for each resource separately. And then the final test, oh, test. The final trick that we need to do here is use filter inserters to only insert what the train is asking for. Uh, the Bonbon, bon. thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, we're already only asking for a train to come if it's going to be full. And we also need to do a precise load. Or, okay, a really lazy way to do this would just be to set... Well, no, it wouldn't work if you set the stack size to 1, because it's effectively a stack size of 6 over here. Um, why is this one not messed up? Oh, because we're doing the filters for each resource. Oh, and because we're not... Um, hmm, I never thought of that. We can use the filter version to get around uh, the problem of contamination from other signals. Anyway, we're going to need a precise loader um, to deal with this. So we're getting the amount that the train is asking for 
minus what is in the train. We're going to remove some signals that are not useful to us. I'm just going to steal that from somewhere else this time. Already built this from scratch earlier this stream. So minus a million for any signal that we don't want passed through this. Uh, input count, actually. Each greater than zero, put it through. Then we need... Uh, I believe it's five combinators. There's not going to be a way to do this neatly, is there? Actually, maybe we could do it this way this time. Uh, each divided by 24 chests. Output each. Same again, but output S for stack size. Uh, get the remainder of that, and then do the same thing again, but the number is four, one cargo wagon each. Uh, for one, uh, one for each cargo wagon, rather. And then this goes to these three. We take the remainder and give it to these two. I've only got 12 red wire on me. Let's do this. Uh, red wire goes to each of these inserters. These inserters are set to set filters and set stack size S. Remember to copy all of them this time. And then uh, just one of them for each cargo. Excuse me. Uh, just one of them for each cargo wagon on this green wire. And then as soon as we've got... Uh, there's one more step. I don't want a train coming when there's exactly 8,000 uh, stone, for example. Each greater than 8,200. I'll put each. Uh, the reason for that is if these, if we've got exactly 8,000 stone here and it's perfectly balanced, which it should be, or if I put the stack size on of these inserters to one, it would be exact. Um, and the train is trying to insert exactly 8,000. Once it gets down to the remainder, like less than 24 stone to insert, it's only going to be this, 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 and this inserter that can put anything in anymore. So it's going to be trying to unbalance uh, these chests just a little bit. So it's going to need a little bit extra, basically. So that is Vulcanite again, um, or rather the consumption of Vulcanite that allows us to... What is going on here? I'll deal with you in a moment. Um, yeah, we've got all of these resources moving again. Fantastic. And we should have 8,000 uranium here which means a train will be coming to pick it up relatively soon. Live long and prosper, hashtag Vulcanite. Yes, indeed. Uh, what's the threshold for this? 8.4k. 8.2 is probably enough. Maybe I should lower it a bit, because it's actually going to be a little while before we pick up this uranium. That's fine. Okay, what is going on with... I, I am going to have to physically go there, actually. What's going on with this train? It's asking... What? Uh, I think I know where this train is 
going. Yeah, I didn't account for that. Okay. So... The train is trying to take both copper and iron to the copper and iron drop-off. Are we really that full on iron? There's quite a lot of iron here. Quite a lot of iron here. Quite a lot of iron here. Quite a lot of... Wow. Okay, that is a little bit surprising. I, I don't know why we've got like 39,000. Oh, I see. No, I do understand actually why we're not completely filling this. Um, so we're actually trying to destroy iron now. I guess uh, that needs to be placed again. Don't get distracted so you won't lose your train of thoughts. <laughs> yes, indeed. I don't know what to do about this. Um, the assumption that has failed us here is that this a train would only ever be bringing 8,000 copper or 8,000 iron to this station. I could... I, I think I will. I, I'll, I'll write a circuit up here that'll only put through one of those negative signals at once. But yeah, that that assumption combined with assuming that we're getting a multiple of four for this, for whatever resource, uh, has led us to this dilemma. Okay, I'm going to have to take just a really quick break. I'll be back in just a minute or two. See you then. I am a little bit surprised we haven't run into this issue before, um, but with the Omni smelters, we're doing iron ore and iron plate, which we don't pick up in the same spot, but we are doing copper ore and stone at the same time. So theoretically, this could have happened before, but... We've had this continuing for a long time without having this occur, so... And we've got the same sort of setup here, whereby if we're below some amount, ask for 8,000. I'm pretty sure that's the same as this one. Mm, no, it's not. We're just reporting what we've got versus the negative. That I think we were doing it this way earlier with the Omni Smelters. So 
so it could have happened like this. Maybe it's a, a little bit of random chance that that hasn't happened yet. Okay. Easy solution to this right now is to just send the train on its way. And over here... Um, well... I'm not sure what the most succinct way to correct this is, actually. I think if we... how much have we got here? 40k now? Uh, I should have checked how much we were bringing, but I think if we were doing the thing where we output... Um, Let's disconnect that, and that. I suspect by outputting 8,000, um, sorry, negative 8,000. This needs to be a decider. I could probably reduce use that by one combinator, actually. It's, it'll be less symmetrical, but I can live with it. So that goes there. That goes to those two. Uh, these two go to this one. And then this is already connected to here. That is also connected. All right. If iron ore is less than 49,000, output one iron ore, and same thing for copper. I hope I didn't just... No, I think we're good. That was a weirdly short bump-a-dump sound. Alright, what is this train picking up? I thought... Okay, it's this train. 8,000 copper. Perfect. We'd probably better do the same thing down here. Can I just do it like this? Kind of. Stone. Stone. Pole. And pole. And then that connects there, that connects to these two, this goes here, and here, and these two connect to this one. Oh, so we've got enough stone. Fantastic. Is it going to be a problem over here? Um... It could be, question mark? I don't see why not. What's going on with this? We've got a very full train here. Copper plate, maximum. Request stack threshold, full train. Balanced unloaders, except, oh, there's your problem. This is set to copper, not copper plate. All right, let's rebalance this, shall we? And there should be enough room now, considering there were three empty chests there. I don't know if... I almost think this, uh... This isn't going to be enough. Like, we're going to need another one of these. Probably with the bigger SE stack sizes. A Nyron Wolf. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. 
Um, our current stack size is only eight. I was going to say six, but I forgot I actually upgraded it a little bit more. Or oh, I didn't realize that research got finished, actually. Lord Finzens, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Is this the most recent version of SE, and which other mods are you using? I believe it is. Um, not sure when it was last updated. Does it auto-update, or...? I guess not. Uh, other mods are... Crafting Combinators, Afraid of the Dark, Bottleneck Light... Wait, Bottleneck Light? I don't remember... I don't remember using that. When did I put that in the list? Pick a Dollies, Rate Calculator, Squeak Through, Tree X-Ray... Underneath these vehicle snap, calculator UI, and even distribution. So basically, quality of life plus crafting combinators plus space exploration. Thanks, you're welcome. Do those drop pods crash or cargo capsules? Yes, uh, Emma, we are deliberately destroying items because we're full on certain items and getting most of our resources from core mining at this point. And because the um, core fragments, 16 of them, uh, because they give us a specific ratio of different resources, unless we're consuming at exactly that ratio, we're eventually going to run out of space for something. Um, and once you've run out of storage space for a... Uh, once you run out of storage space somewhere where you need a filtered output, the whole thing is going to stop, no matter how you're doing the filtering. Whether you've got filter inserters taking each resource separately out of a pulverizer, or if you have a common belt uh, that filters things away. Uh, in this case, filtering away vulcanite and uranium and the train station itself oh we did what where is what how did what that was weird are you full now no i don't know how this one happened It wasn't the issue that we just fixed while it was already sent there, because it's not going there. Oh, it was probably some of these inserters were sticking out after the last one. There we go. It's the same problem with liquids if you don't set up correctly and stop producing lube because light oil is full or whatever. Yeah, exactly. It's, um, it's just like how we need cracking uh and luckily petroleum is always the most in demand thing and heavy oil is the least in demand thing uh we need cracking to keep making fluid because otherwise you know heavy oil is full we can't output anything except we can't crack copper to iron at least if that research exists in space exploration I'm not aware of it, and I'm not there yet. Hanging in hands when the train pulled in. Hanging in hands. Yes, yes it was, exactly. It's a domino effect where we had one problem, and then it caused another problem, where normally this would work perfectly. I would add a void mod. Uh, this is the void mod right here. And what a void mod. Look at it go. SE and K2. If K2 you get matter eventually. Like matter destruction. It's creative? Yeah. I mean this is... I'm pretty sure this is the only way that I can deal with this. Um, I was a little bit worried when I realized that even if you shoot it into the ocean... Um, you end up with items remaining, even though it destroys most of them. I think you get 13 items back. Well, that's from a stack of 50, anyway. 
Um, but yeah, if you, sh if you, if I aim it at the middle of the, uh, this big lake here, um, basically the items are going to accumulate at the nearest piece of land. I actually thought for a second that, um, that they were just getting outright destroyed by aiming it at the water, but that's not what was happening. This, this system's about to get clogged again. How much Vulcanite do we have here? 51k. Uh, maybe I should have over-engineered uh, over this new Vulcanite processing area a bit more so that we could clear this stuff out a bit quicker. How much have we got? 50k. But these two alone are a bit more than enough to keep up with all of the pulverizers we have uh, doing core fragments and core mining is not keeping up with that so it'll definitely sort itself out but on the other hand I, I would be more concerned by this um, I think we'll just wait it out but currently we're destroying not just copper, but iron as well, because we've got too much of everything to keep producing. Um, I wonder if I could add some logic in to... Maybe we could stop core mining if we've got... If we've got both iron and copper queued up for destruction over here. We've got everything except for coal. Yeah, we could probably, we could probably count the number of things that we've got more than zero of, um, that have been queued up for destruction over here in these train stations. And let's say if there's two things that we're fully loaded on, just stop core mining for a little while. Well, stop core mining until that changes. Matter conversion, you can sink one resource into matter fluid, then make another item out of it. That would be nice. That That is basically cracking for solids, only better, I guess. A hey, Don Tito, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Fulgurd as well, good to see you again. Hope you're doing well. K2 offers a way to change materials into matter. Ah, oh, yep, yeah, I see. You can have a crazy amount of steel chests, uh, stack aside. If, what if you turn the iron in plates in steel, and then make a ton of chests, then drop your pods on chests that contain those steel chests. The trouble with that is it isn't automated. I'd limit core mining only when you have some of each thing, yeah. Well, we deliberately made a really big sink for coal, but it should... I don't understand why this station right here never seems to have any coal. Um, every time I check on it, anyway. Actually, neither of our coal liquefaction stations... Oh, this one's just running out. Um... Oh, it's because we're producing so much sulfur, we're, we're using so much sulfur on our new um, uh, heat shield factory, I think. Yeah, it's currently waiting on more sulfur. How is our steel doing? Omni smelters are mostly switched off. Which is not a bad thing. Oh, wow, they've pretty much stopped, actually. Um, I should definitely have... I, I should definitely add some displays to these so we know how much of each thing we've got without mousing over something. 8.4k. There isn't enough of any output resource here for a train. What do we got for inputs? Plenty, 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 plenty. Why are we not smelting? Um, 
We're trying to make cryonite. Wait. We're trying to make cryonite, steel. Oh, let me guess. There's not quite enough iron. Okay, there's 54k iron. Once it gets to 100k, we will start making steel. Um, set, uh, glass? We don't have sand for some reason. There's a lot of sand here. In fact, it's completely full. Uh, did I only patch like a couple of these stations for sand? No, wait. All of these stations are full of sand. So why aren't we making glass? Okay, something is off here. We've definitely got a small enough amount of glass that we're trying to smelt it. Uh, we've got plenty of sand. The... The counter for the sushi belt thinks we've got 78 sand on the belt for some reason, but that is nowhere near enough to trick the system into not putting sand on the belt. Industrial Revolution 2 or Crestoria 2? Now that's a heat shield factory? Yeah. This will probably be the last one that we need. Um, I actually have no idea why our Omni smelters are stopped. Let's see. Sand? Uh, we do have less than 4k. Recipe glass is true. Uh, how did this get turned around? Don't tell me it's like that on all of them. No? Recipe glass is true. Oh, this one. Uh, and this one? This one seems to be working just fine. Even though... Somehow we ended up with the express... I would have done this as a temporary way to stop sand getting on the belt. But I don't think that was why the Omni smelters weren't smelting. And I think I've missed my window to figure out why they stopped. It seems like they're just going to work now. I am curious to know after I changed the modules in the beacons to to fit for steel throughput uh that is very much going to be bottlenecked on the input belts the one thing i really want to change if i redesign this uh omni smelter system and it is going to be a lot of work to redesign it um even though i've got all the working parts is uh, for certain resources, we need way more belt bandwidth. Um, currently, I, I changed the uh, speed modules and efficiency modules so that it'll consume exactly 90 iron plate per second if we're making steel. So this whole thing is ratioed for steel now, which is obviously not ideal for other resources. Um, I think this is just one of the big downsides that we might have to deal with if we're going to have an Omni Smelter block that is just smelting one thing together all at once, which there's certain reasons that we are doing that, um, is that we're either going to have to have way more... We're going to have to have way, 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 way more belt input than we need 
for steel to not have a bunch of the smelters offline when we're smelting other things. Or, even though we're using crafting combinators, we're going to have to, like, allow each individual furnace to be smelting something different, or at least in small blocks, which might be a bit tricky. Also played with expensive research, I think. Challenge as in the achievements or a hundred times per second. Okay. Um, but yeah, good to see it's not broken. And good to see Vulcanite is now being consumed fast enough. That's effectively going to buff how quickly we can make the other resources as well. Because that is all going to uh, smelting efficiency. The versions of the recipes that use the vulcanite blocks, uh, you get considerably more output. Okay, well that's going to just about wrap it up for today. Uh, thank you all for watching, do take care, and we'll see you next time. Uh, we're going to find a stream to raid if you all want to stick around for a few minutes. Uh, in the meantime, check out the Discord or the Blueprints if you're interested. Uh, if you have any questions or requests or if there's anything broken in the Blueprints, by all means let me know. Uh, not a whole lot of people streaming Factorio today. Nope. Nope. Such as the amount of ore in it. Do you know if the ore patches in the starting area are affected by the general ore patch settings? I think they are. Are they not? Monkey is live? Yes, indeed. Why don't we drop in on Monkey? All right, let's head over, shall we? Bodge the Bodge plays wrong type of factory, satisfactory. Uh, that's what I'll be playing the day after tomorrow on my variety day. Alright, let's go, shall we?